So I took too much acid, right? <laughs> and I had a, I had a, uh, I had a pipette. Oh my god! It's a film. It's For fictitious. You to be treating me like this on my own podcast is so. <laughs> Thought about doing the whole Creed truck, like putting the album cover, cover weathered on the hood, human clay on one side, and having like arms wide open on the other. Like Which just Scott stops arms wide just open. Just the whole f***ing truck, like make it like insane because it's a wrap, right? Okay, guys, this is a very exciting moment. We are dropping our brand new merch. We've been teasing it for a while. It is all taints, okay? Right here we have in Japanese, what does it say, Todd? Long balls. It says long balls, and it's in Anniewood, California. Check it out. They're going fast. Um, they may even be sold out by now, so go to the website right now and grab it uh, before it's too late. Guys, like, <laughs> like, subscribe. Hit that, smash that subscribe button. Tell your friends, tell your parents, tell your loved ones. Turn that little bell on, the little Turn notification. Turn the bell on, okay? We know that things are happening. Hey guys, welcome to Annie Wood. This is a very exciting episode. It's episode 33. We know all about Jesus, right? Lived to 33, it was hung like this. Remember guys? This is a very special Christian episode. No, I'm just kidding, it's not. We have Johnny Pemberton on, it's so fun. This is one of my favorite episodes. I was manic, could not sleep after this. You know Johnny Pemberton from all the movies where he plays a child. Also, you know me from being the voice of Cheryl on Grand Theft Auto. I was on Chelsea Lately panel. I was on Girl Code. Um, I had my own show on E! that nobody saw. You don't know about that one. It was called We Have Issues. And I also, yes, had issues with the name of it. Um, you know me from the Comedy Store documentary. You know me from opening up for Bill Burr two nights ago. Um, you know me from the Joe Rogan experience. You know me from uh, my other podcast, Trash Tuesday. You know me as Todd's uh, sugar mama. And the mother to my reptiles. And the mother to all of his reptiles. <laughs> also, I am a touring comedian, and I am having a blast on the road. I'm getting special ready, so the jokes are tight. We have tight jokes, and we have loose crowd work. So you may be featured on my TikTok. You never know. I have... Great shows coming up. Last night, we sold out the Comedy Store for the first Annie Wood and Friends. That's going to be a monthly occurrence, though we are skipping July. August 1st, you can come see me at the Comedy Store. The tickets will be on sale as soon as possible, so keep checking out for that. They do sell out, so you're going to want to grab those quick. Um, I'm going to be this weekend in Texas at the LOL Comedy Club with Josh Tomorrow. Potter. It's tomorrow, Friday, Saturday. Uh, two shows each night. It's going to be a blast. Don't go to the Alamo, guys. They lost. Okay, me and Josh Potter won. You want to hang out with winners? You come see us. Okay, this weekend. I'm also doing a very special uh, show July 3rd in Bakersfield. I don't know the exact venue. I can't remember it, but that will be up on my website uh, by the time this airs. So you can get tickets to that. That's also going to sell out. It's just one show. Another show that's 100% going to sell out is my birthday show in Las Vegas, New New Nevada. I know New Mexico is, a, oh, <laughs> why do you New exist Mexico. Las Vegas, New Mexico? Why? <laughs> anyway, Las Vegas, Nevada. It's going to be so fun. It's at Wise Guys, one show only. Come celebrate my big birthday. I'm turning 20. It's going to be so sick. They're going to let me drink. Um, no, but it's going to be so fun. Lots of fun games, interactive stand up and joy and laughter um please come celebrate my birthday with me all proceeds will be going back into the economy of las vegas and directly into slot machines i'll be in in south carolina july 28th and 29th i'll be in my hometown philadelphia pa at the punchline august 11th and 12th i'm going to be in calgary calgary all right i'm going to be in other places go to my website you can see them san francisco san jose uh, Austin, Texas. I don't want to read the dates anymore. It's actually <laughs> making me visibly angry. <laughs> so enjoy this episode with enjoy Jonathan this episode Pemberton. With Jonathan Pemberton. We love him so much. Welcome to Annie Wood. Hi, I'm Johnny Pemberton, and I'm the guest today on Annie Wood, a podcast you're listening to right now here on Sirius XM. Are we on Sirius? No, you're not, we but I just said serious. that. We get real serious in We're the XM. We get loose on serious. In the PM, we get real loose. Step into the AM with your PM here on Annie Wood. We're serious. Only on uh, anyway. WXJ76. What was your, where did you grow up? Minnesota. What was your radio station? KROC, yeah. 
Carol, Carol, C. Carol C. Randy Dean in the morning. Randy Dean. I love Dean. Randy Dean. I remember I saw him in a parade once. I and freaked I was out, like, right? Oh my God, he looks like not that interesting. It's crazy when you yeah. see what they look like and you're like, oh, I've listened to you so much. It's not. And he looks like, yeah, it looks kind of like a, like a guy who'd be working at a bar. Who you know? smokes. It's like, that was just oh, like, look like guys that you smoke. smoke. Yeah. If you're in living in Rochester, Minnesota, you smoke. Rochester. Rochester. Another Rochester. Did you have to go on from Rochester, um, Minnesota? No, because I didn't. Who would I say that to? Like, yeah, I guess you're right. Like, you know, people. Pen pals. I have to be leaving this place to say that. Did you ever have a pen pal when you were little? I think when I was really little. I don't remember it very well. <laughs> was it like, a, remember they had like programs where they would like set you up with people? Yeah, it was part of school. They would do it in school. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, yeah. what's. Seems sinister. It seems a little bit like with, maybe. It was like a man writing us back with like his left hand to look yeah. like it was. Well, he's masturbating with the yeah, right. He's like, uh, right I've been working hand. hard on this birdhouse for you, my friend who's the same age as me. Uh, who knows? So Johnny Pemberton is a, he's a comedian and actor. Right. Uh, uh, uh -huh. a, a character of sorts. Yeah. He's a, he's more of an alternative. Uh, oh my God, here we go. There's no it's more, it's like, all, what are you talking about? Alternative? Alternative to what? Know, being unsuccessful? That's what I'm the alternative to. That doesn't exist anymore. There's some such thing as alternative comedy anymore. Is you there? know when it died? You know when alternative comedy died? When there was that Many, show on um, Vice where they were like out of their garage? That was like they oh, literally yeah. like, they Flop did. Flop that was not, they were like, we're going to do a show. Ago, was it? What? That was not that long ago. I know. They were like, we're going to do a show about it. And it was yeah. like the end of it. All. They were like, it's hard to get booked in clubs. So we just started doing it on our mattress outside. And yeah. then it was like, the everyone was like, ew, that's what you guys are doing. And then it was like, it killed it forever. I feel like. I guess so. I feel like it was like a slow decline. Yeah. I don't even know. Because I, I think you and I can't talk about it because we're inside of it. So yes. we don't really know. Really, you know I mean? someone else would have to tell us. Someone have from the outside, some really boring, like university <laughs> guy, have to be like, "So alternative comedy was beginning when." You know, oh my that kind god! Of little shit. Like a imagine Wikipedia guy. Imagine that's your life. Imagine your life is being like a comedian's historian. Oh, the worst people who are like really into comedy, seriously into comedy. Those are well to know scary. more about comedy. Like most of my fans who are here right now listening are probably like the people we're making fun of. I don't but think that's true. Like, no, they're cool. My fans are cool. They're yeah. all awesome. They're very fun. They let me sign their things. I sign a lot of weird stuff at my shows. What do you mean? Like a, oh, I sign a lot of sacks. I sign like... Like a ball sack. Oh, yeah. How do you sign a ball sack? They have to pull them taut. I learned. <laughs> I didn't know at first, and I was poking them. I'm not pulling anything taut. That, would be, that sounds uncomfortable. Yours look like they are taut. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Milky. You like I feel like you have like full, you're filled with milk. I'm filled with milk? Yeah. You seem like a hearty, like, filled with milk sack guy. Um, I don't mean that's not in a sexual way. I'm just like just listening. I don't even know. You're just like, I don't know what to say. So wait, we just found a out. I have been like running with this theory that you right. have Crohn's disease. Right. It's not a theory. I don't have Crohn's disease. But I had a theory that you had Crohn's disease. I, I had don't know colitis. What. I had ulcerative colitis, colitis, which is different. And it went away? No, I had my colon removed. And now it doesn't, it's not a problem. Well, it's definitely a problem, but it's just a different problem. What happens when you don't have a colon? Well. Does poop fall out? Well, no, this is like a very long discussion. I could go into you want to spend like the next hour. I'm actually doing a show right now. It's called Minnesota Reggae Colostomy Bag. And it's my one person oh, show great. that's eventually will be a special, but it's all about, you know, having colitis, uh, having my colon removed, having a colostomy bag and having that colostomy bag removed. And then like just, you know, life with um, all this kind of stuff. Were you happy that you got married before this? The no, colostomy I bag? had all this. This is old. I've oh, had a bowel old. disease for almost 30 years now. So I'd like you know, it's been a part of my Why life. Why are you my so mad life. at me? I'm not mad at all. I'm just being very serious about it because it's like a thing where, XM. because I, I got married. Uh, I mean, I've been dealing with this for a long time. So yeah. there's, there's almost nothing in my life that hasn't happened in the context of having a bowel disease Does, because I got it when I was 10 years old. Oh, so okay. Is that like, why you stopped growing at 10? You um, became a 10 year old boy yeah, forever? It's definitely, it actually is part of it. Yeah, for sure. Is it, it actually really? is a big piece of it. It's a combination of that. And also my mom literally does have really good genes in terms of yes. she looks 20 years younger than she is. Yes. So it's just that combined with having a bowel disease when you're going through puberty. I think it's like, now I'm just beautiful, you know? Now yeah, look like at fucking, me forever, a doll. Yes, in the right but lighting. You are um, someone that has like played a teenager for the whole time I've known you. No, because you still know me. You don't, you're not playing a teenager anymore? I mean, I, no. <laughs> if you I think, think you're I could play a teenager, you don't know what, 
teens look like. Thank I God do, you don't I know what teens look like. I sat next to a like. teenager on a flight, and it yeah. was so it was making me laugh so hard. Teenagers are so little. They're I such see babies. a teenager now, and I'm thinking like, what the. F- Yes. This is like a child. They're really little. Or it's like a man who is so gangly. Like it's like a, like a six foot man who you can go like this to and he goes, oh, Yes, and their face is like really yeah. shiny and greasy. Exactly. Like I it's sat- the kind of people I feel so confident around. I can be like, stop it. And they just go, okay, okay. I you know? have gone to, okay, so I feel like when I realized that I had like, I had like started really like solving my childhood trauma was when probably early 30s, I realized like it's not cool right. to smoke. They're so dirty. I'm sorry, but go for it. <laughs> I go for it. They're just so smudged. I'm gonna be embarrassed. Like you go blind when you put them on. You see, not you as well. You look like there's someone who's blind with these. I know. On. Isn't like, that cool? Oh my god, you look great in them. You are uh, the scent. No, this is there. your look. Um, okay, but you so, your but listen. So trauma. I okay. So I realized when I like decided to be an adult because I was kind of frozen at 14. I feel like. Yeah. And then that's a trauma response thing, right? It is. Okay. Yeah, like you just kind of like oh, I'm not right. bigger. But I just associated myself as like a. Young but you kid. didn't keep the trauma voice though. A lot of women I have a, the. Like baby oh my God. I, 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 I'm so happy about... to be on The Bachelor. I'm a I'm assistant therapy assistant. <laughs> yeah, I have a joke. I have a joke about that where I'm like, Jesus, when was I molested when I was an 85 year old like, <laughs> postal worker? You yeah, molested by like a pack of cigarettes, <laughs> <laughs> chain smoker. But um, so you this kid to says, realize. okay, so I realized I. Like 32, I was like, it's not cool to buy cigarettes for kids. Like, I like it. What? Not that kids ever asked me to, but right. I just like, I had this epiphany one day where I was like, oh, I must really be growing up. Like, I know I'm on the side of the grown up being like, that's not good, rather than the the grown up's like, what? Oh. or the kid that's like, fuck these grown ups, not letting you smoke cigarettes. Come I would on. 100% love for kids to ask me to buy something. For would them. you buy them for it? Oh, of course, I'll buy them cigarettes. Hell yeah. Really? Yeah, it's especially. Better, I wouldn't buy them a vape though. <laughs> uh oh, Todd. Yeah, How's baby, no, especially baby since spam. they raised the age to twenty one. I had kids ask me to buy them cigarettes because they were like, "I guess I'm the only one. grown up yeah. in the room." Okay, now guys, I want to be cool. I guess my trauma's not gone. I want to be cool. I feel fourteen and like I want to fit in with you guys. So I'm like, "Yeah, I'll buy the kids cigarettes." Who wants a carton? I mean, I don't want them to. Well, I don't know. I guess I just don't really give a shit because they're gonna get them somehow. The people that bought me things though were like trying to molest me, so I guess I associate it with oh. that too. So I never had that. I never had. Maybe I've had it like a little bit once or twice with some older gay men but never had yeah i have a different i could see in a so. little snack but i didn't even realize it a little pig in a blanket wrap you up in a blanket i was very unaware of what was going on i was like i thought they're just being nice you isn't know? it weird when you look back you're like oh oh yeah that was just, this was a guy taking pictures of me and like tagging it like <laughs> my, my new office twink <laughs> yeah i had no idea um maybe a little bit not really yeah well you're like i'm getting some attention here and then you go Ooh. yeah I'm not Did he lean money. in for a kiss? No. That's when it gets weird. <laughs> yeah. When they lean in, you're like, oh, what? It's God. so shocking. It's such a betrayal. You're like, it's crazy how much creepy stuff women have to deal with. It's just absolutely insane. Like yeah. it's so disproportionate. It's <laughs> it unbelievable. Is. It's the kind of thing where sometimes I, I didn't realize that even happened until not that long ago. Just the, the degree yeah. of creepiness. It's like weird. how a lot of women... They don't want to go on a walk. I'm like, why don't you want to go on a walk? It's like, because I'm going to get harassed <laughs> all the time by people. New York's really bad about that. New York's wild. It's fucking insane. They'll follow you into a, I'm getting followed into a bodega. If you ignore, it's like this craziest thing. You're like, there's no like right way to handle it. The only way to handle it is to be like a, like a Dominican woman who's super bra- brassy and be like, shut the fuck up, you little bitch. And then they go like, either they get bugged off or like, oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, I've done all of those. Sometimes you go, like, you know, it actually does work if you go, thanks. And you like a little spin, then they get their really? little like hit of like, oh, look, I made her. Okay. You're like, thanks. But yeah. you, sometimes you're just like, I don't want to be say thanks. It's so annoying. You're you talking to walk me. that line. That's going to be hard to figure it's out. It's hard to maneuver, but oh, God. you become, you become good at it. Yeah. Usually. But I always feel like it's weird. Like, yeah, it's just, there's a shocking lean in always. Lean there's, in. there's a lean in where someone's leaning for kissing. I don't. I literally don't notice till they're this close to my face. I'm like, oh god. Oh. I've shot up the X's a lot in my life. <laughs> like, I've heard about the. Uh, there's like a hug, a type of hug that happens, right? Mm. There's like a breast scoop hug. I don't have. It's like the incel hug. It's this thing where it's I'm like, not like a boob person. Yeah, you don't have. So. Uh, I never had breasts, that. So, but there's like a thing where guys will do like a hug where it's like. You know, it's like a little bit of uh, trying I feel to like squish. I do that to women with boobs. Well, then, I just uh, I'm like to it. feel boobs on my chest. I've never had boobs on my chest, so when I get them on my chest, I'm like, ooh, squishy. Yeah, they're squishy. I'm really like a big fan of boobs. Why don't you get some? I don't, I love other people's boob jobs. Right. I like having little boobs. I okay. think it's a great lifestyle. So, but you just said the opposite. 
I like other people's boobs. Oh, I get it. I like yeah. boobs. Like I really like boob vicariously. Yes, and I love like I love a boob job. I feel like it's it's they're like doing a service. Like I always I thank I them for like their them. service. They look good. I mean, they can look good. They look like yeah, I like yeah. the I mean, even when I can tell they're fake though, sometimes like like the roundness of them and with like a sweater. Nah, so cute. It's too round. It's like this thing where you're like a, not a human. Yeah. Well, I'm it's not definitely not human. Yeah, I don't like that. What if we started doing I think we need a new where it's like one boob's real and one boob's fake. There needs Ooh. to be like an evolution. Yeah, I think that would be a, a, like a an, Jekyll and Hyde, like an alternate evolution, not a not a evolution evolution. You know, it's like I can be like, look, I'm a, I'm like a hippie. I'm oh, a, I'm a hippie on the left. I'm, it's like a what's housewife. his name? Two face. So it's two tit. Yes, two one is big and uh, big and fake, and the other one's like kind of deflated and Both small. Pierced. I just have to be deflated. Just be regular. Well, I have small <laughs> boobs, and I always think in my head like, oh, they're gonna age well. But then I was like, oh wait, they might be the worst kind of boob Why? where they shrivel up and they're small i think you have to breastfeed for that to happen <laughs> he knows i'm not gonna be a mother a look at him he's like you're done bitch i think you're not having kids so <laughs> i've been uh having so many debates about whether or not i'm gonna have kids because we have frozen embryos oh then i guess you could do it i'm not like yeah. i could still do it naturally a lot of my friends who are older than me have gotten naturally knocked up Oh, it's so weird. It happens now so much, especially like with Robert De Niro and uh, Al Pacino both <laughs> having like these, like they're incredibly old. It's just so kind of mean to the kid. Yeah. <laughs> like you're I not going to have a dad. Well, who does? I mean, really, who has a dad, dad? Like very I few have... people have. Well, no, my dad's such must a dad. On, right? My dad's such comedy. a dad that he, well, he was really mean to me when I was little, but now he's well, nice. But he but how, is. How little, how little was he mean to you? Like, well, how, what age? Really, I was called like a selfish cunt a lot as a small, but, small child. Uh, what age did you start being nice? When I was like 16. Okay, so too late. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he so tried. Yeah, I'm trying. a bad dad. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's nice now. But right, no, I had a bad dad. He knows he's a bad dad. Yeah, he that's why you do comedy. He's, yeah. Like every person I got comedy. To everyone. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you, you have a. Are you right. going to have kids? I don't think so. I think it's, I don't know. I mean, obviously I could. You're my age, right? You're 39, 40? Yeah. Yeah. So I could, but it's also like <laughs> Do you not say your age? No, I just you just said it. Okay. So I said two ages, but yeah. yeah, but it's all it's all kind of wishy washy <laughs> there. Why say more words than I Especially have? Especially in the world of casting, isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah. Somebody could still play a high schooler, even though I, I was shamed for that. I idea. absolutely cannot. Hundred percent cannot. Even if I in the op chance I could, I would do something that makes it so I can't be because I would be so miserable working yeah, with those people. Yeah, it's not appropriate. But you played a high schooler in 21 Jump Street or 22 Jump Street, right? Yeah, the movie was shot over 10 years ago. <laughs> Everything okay? is such a blur. Honestly, I, I, that could have been six months ago. The movie came out over 10 years ago. It was shot even longer ago. But what's funny about it is that you were a grown-up playing an actual high schooler when grown-ups were playing high schoolers. Yeah, uh, everyone in that movie was a grown up playing a high school. That's the point of the movie. Is it's, uh... But you were an actual kid in the school, right? Weren't you? Or were you one of the? It's a movie, so it's. Uh, oh my god! It's a film. It's For fictitious. You to be treating me like this on my own podcast is so fucked up. <laughs> For you to come in here and shame me, this I'm is why the Lord you. gave you colitis. I have a colon, and you're talking shit to me. I'm doing fine. Okay, I'm doing great. You know what I like is when I asked Lord you about gave me it. Strength. He's my shepherd. You know I should not want. When I asked you about it. Yeah, you your only option was to go into your full one man hour show. Yeah. Like you didn't. There's no like abbreviated version I mean, of it. It really is hard to talk about it abbreviated because anything I say just makes you ask three more questions because right. it, it's really complicated. It's like a super like I had a two part surgery to take a semester off of college. All this crazy stuff. So it's like very involved. People always ask the same questions about it and stuff. And so it's do you get like ugh, um when they no? Ask it's question. more just like I. Either I don't want to talk about it in a certain way. And sometimes it's like, I love to talk about it, but it's also, it's just, it's a can of worms kind of yeah. thing. And it's sometimes it's not that fun to talk about it for either person. Cause yeah. it's like very, it's one of those technical. conversations where you're like, Oh God. Yeah. Well, here we are. How do we get out of this one? I don't feel bad We're about only it. You know? 45 minutes. We got 15 minutes left of this story. <laughs> I feel, I feel good about it too. Also, good. I don't feel like. You're not like traumatized by it. I mean, of course I am, but I'm not like traumatized in a way where. 
I have control of it and I talk about it and it's like a good thing. I think it's made me who I am. I think it's something where if I didn't have this, I think I would probably be like a, a bigger asshole than I am now. Do people ask the question, do you shit your pants a lot? Uh, yeah. That's the, one of the questions? Right. Okay, never mind. And I don't ever shit my pants. Because oh my God. You don't have to, sh no one has to shit their pants at all. You just take off your pants <laughs> and take a shit. For real. But it's like, I've done that many times. Where, where you're been, like in public and you're just like. Well, you just run into like a child. parking garage or like a corner or someplace. And if you can shit really fast, why would you shit your pants? Have you ever been caught? Like, it's hard to put your pants like on that fast. Have you ever Not been me. caught pantsless, bottomless? Um, No, I'm just really good at it. That's so funny. That's one of your skill sets that you learned. Yeah. This is like your super. I actually hero. took a shit on set not that long ago, about six months ago on set in Utah. This thing I'm, I was shooting. I said to take a walk back, back in the woods and took a shit. Did people even know or were you back I, in the flash? I had no idea. I mean, everyone's so fucking busy. I think they should recast Ezra. What's his name with you as the flash? That'd be cool. You would be a great flash. I'm being uh, dead fucking I, serious. I think that would be yeah. great, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Because he's been, soon. he's, we've had enough, yeah, he, right? He's I been mean, causing in a way, trouble. I kind of love him. It's been, it has been fun. And because, I do screen grab it and send it to one know, of my friends. Kalila and I have like an ongoing, I just send her pictures of him. Because he's a time. true nut. He's it's like just can not stop. It can't, but you know, I like he's a psycho. He, he's a total psycho. I like that he went non-binary for a while. I think he's back to being he. I think he I is. I hope because I don't want to have to do that. But yeah. when he when he was getting in trouble for like Everything? attacking people <laughs> and doing that stuff, the publications had to be all polite about his. <laughs> That's his, what blew my mind. It was so funny. Like, like what a they, fucking mind fuck. What a also, weird, it like, sounds like a, a gang beating when they say yes. they. I'm like, how many people did it? And then you're like. Oh my God, it's just him. This asshole is making everyone it's do this. It's such a crazy thing. You have this person who's being super disrespectful, Horri flaunting horrific. everything, but the, his, <laughs> but the pronouns must be respected. Otherwise you're doing a disservice. It's like that thing when they like coddling a prisoner or something where the yeah. prisoner has to have this thing. It's like, well, you're in prison. That's prison sucks. <laughs> it's, right. not, it's not good. Right. You don't want to go there. So funny. Yeah, that shit blows my mind. Yeah. He's just such like a... It was great. That was such a beautiful thing to watch. Yeah, I kind of love it because he's like the old style actor. Back when actors used to be, oh, he's he's a lunatic. Yes. <laughs> he's a wild person. He's hard to work with because they're like, like uh, not Gary Busey, but um, Nick Nolte. Like, yes. So he's about Nick Nolte. He's a wild man. He's a true nut. And everyone was like, this is just his process. Yeah. And everyone just had to get abused by him. And right. it was a part of it. And it was awesome. There was something awesome about yeah. it. Yeah. I don't know. But I never was on set with someone like that or on set. But um, I'm good with those people. I'm good with psychos. Of course. Well, you're adaptable. You can play. You're a good, uh, you're a good actor. I feel like you would be able know. to like I can sometimes. But I mean, I like those people who are that type of personality, those like psychopathic, super domineering personalities. I kind of like to be around them. It's like being around like a like a wild animal or something. Where yeah, you have is that to... what you like? Do you like yeah. that, Johnny? Well, because the key to being with them is just to, when they try to fuck with you, you just act like it's nothing. If you, it's the same and as being around a dog. Else. You know, like yes. a crazy dog that's big. You don't want to act scared around the dog. You want to ignore the dog. Like a like if a 100-pound German Shepherd busts in here, you just ignore that fucker because I'm alpha of that yeah. dog. I don't care about that dog. I have actually been doing this in some of my relationships in life. And it has been working. We also, we like hanging around uh, that guy, Jeff. Carsalis. Oh, we love He's Jeff Carsalis. He has PTSD. Oh, I don't think Do you I know him that. from the comedy story? I, I think he been banned now. I don't know him. If you've met name. him, he came up to me. He's like, look at you. Where do you live in? Silver Lake? Silver Spoon? You're rich. <laughs> no. Have you ever killed a girl no, in no. Iraq? He'll, wow. he'll walk up to you and he'll be like, you know what I hate? People that wear like red flannels and black pants and walk Think around so. and go, oh yeah, look at me, look at me. He just <laughs> is like, so wait, mad at you. I would love that. I would love that. <laughs> and he's so unhinged and he'll just be like, he'll tell you about like people he killed in Iraq. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Do you yeah, and you're it? like, what? Do you believe it? 100 million percent. <laughs> Got it. I believe every single word that comes out of his mouth. I've heard him say it on a loop. He's just on a PTSD loop. Mm. I've heard it. <laughs> Yeah, he goes, yeah. he goes, oh, where are you from? Silver Spoon Lake or Ego Park? <laughs> <laughs> Ego Park's pretty good. But he's like brilliant while he's doing it, but it, it, people are very scared of he's him. He's a comedian? Yeah. Or he's, he's a, a hanger outer. He's a comedian. Yeah. But I don't, he's not really allowed to hang out anymore. He hates comedy and he hates everybody. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. Huh. It's like all he's been through, like the most annoying thing for him is not being passed to the store. It's like it never, oh. it never stops annoying everyone. It annoys him that he hasn't been passed. Yes, but you know what I mean? Like yeah. he'll complain about everything and then the number one gripe is... Is the, is the yeah. store. 
He needs to get past. Mm, I don't know if it's going to happen for him, but he is. He's a he's a fun, troubled man. But you do. You go like, ooh. Yeah, it's you're hanging out with them, you're like, oh God. It's exciting, right? It's a little it exciting because you feel like you're a little bit in danger. Yes. And I kind of that was like my thing. I feel like growing up was like, I'm always in a little bit of danger, but I always get through it. So it's then I get cocky about my abilities to about your ability to navigate um and not either. even just just not even touchers. not even that. Not even touchers, just just craziness. Yeah. Always craziness. But um Madness. so you're okay, have you heard <laughs> no no no. What you were talking about with the Nick Nolte You're thing, I love. special. It's on. This is no. my. I'm neurodivergent. I have ADD, ADHD. Uh, do you? Are you neurodivergent? That's what you call it. No. I know. I know about. Is that so funny? I that have you can TikTok. Call, I know. Is that so funny that you can call ADD neurodivergent? Now? Yeah, I feel like it's just. Uh, it's Ooh, not. It does neuro- not have ADD. Do people are not have, do you not have it? I think I have. I think I have a different kind of it. Really, I don't think I have like a traditional version of it. But I definitely have focus problems for sure yeah 100 percent. forget shit i'm like yeah. mid-sentence Do you ever take anything for it i used to take adderall and right. ritalin but you don't know no why'd no, you no. stop it makes me crazy it's like i also talk yeah. so fast like when you put adderall on me it's like it's hard to uh, understand yeah. me i have sometimes i have a weird relationship with it. i think that sometimes it helps me a lot other times i find like the crash is so bad it's not worth uh, it mm-hmm. and it's also a thing where like it makes you un- puts you in unnatural state of like a heightened state of confidence mm-hmm. where I think is like you don't have access to certain like nuances of emotion mm. that you want to have access yeah. to. And I, yeah. I don't know. It is. I mean, we have some at the house and I'll take it like if I want to clean, but I don't even right. pretend yeah, to clean yeah. anymore. I don't even pretend to clean. We just hire someone, <laughs> but I stopped. I went, you know what? Well, yeah. Let's stop this shaming myself for doing this thing. I'm never going to do. I'm never going to be a clean person. Yeah, but I feel that I gotta stop doing that too. It's just why am I trying to change? God, I gotta do that. Who I've been this entire right. time? It's just so much energy is wasted on me, like being mad at myself for not doing the thing I said I was gonna do that I knew I'm never gonna do. Are you a messy hotel room person? Oh, I go in, Johnny. <laughs> you thank go you insane? for asking. When I go in, I take my suitcase. I dump oh it upside God. down. Okay. If there's two beds, one bed is just trash everywhere. Okay. This is how Duncan is too. I go into the bathroom. And I can't I piss, believe it. I don't flush the toilet to assert my I... dominance, assert my dominance Oof. over the room that I put on TV's on, not even looking at it. TV's just on. It's this be is all just bothering me so much. And um, yeah, it's like the Hunter S. Thompson, like a uh, fear and loathing oh, that ap- hotel room. That's Annie's hotel room at all. But sometimes <laughs> I try. Sorry, opposite. my hair clip is coming out. But sometimes I um, does this look weird, Bo? I mean, it doesn't uh, matter. It doesn't matter. We show our dents here. <laughs> that's our. That's our thing, right? <laughs> we show our wires. Um. But yeah, no, I tried hotel. to be clean in a hotel and I put all my stuff away. And then Todd told me that his mom was like, never totally told him to never take your stuff out because you'll get bed bugs. Yeah. If you stay at those kind of places, you know, it's like- <laughs> but then I was staying at a nice place and there were, I fucking sat down you on the couch and there, I don't know if it was bed bugs or what, cause we didn't bring anything back, but, or Ooh. I didn't bring anything back, but there were bugs crawling in it and I was ruined for- Name the name. What was I'll find out. Okay. I'll tell I you. Wasn't with I would have no problem saying it publicly. I literally right. can't remember. It was the place I was you were with it. It was like a cubist. It wasn't like super high end, but mm-hmm. it was like nice enough where it, it was nice enough like to where you would not expect that. Right. Yeah. But I'm the opposite. I like to keep my hotel room fucking clean as hell. I try it. Every once in a while I try it. And I do think I have to do it. I have to. I'll even though I, I said that I am never gonna change, I do have a dream. The dream I have is that someone, an organizer comes into my house, declutters it. What? That's not an organizer? No. Todd isn't that type of Asian and it's really upsetting. I feel like he falsely advertised. Uh, Todd's coming out with some real new things. He's really yeah. he really kept some secrets from me. I want to talk about it. I can be a therapist right now. Tell him what you've done. The audience knows what I want Johnny to know. I just, you know, I took in a few reptiles and oh, made he became some... a reptile guy like I'm rapidly, rapidly rapid it's reptile it's right. pretty See, fucking this awesome. therapist is like oh um i mean um no no no. i'm into it too but it's, go. i'm into it too but it's scary because it was zero to five reptiles this is the therapist who loves reptiles years. ready he okay, okay, okay i'm the therapist i'm your therapist okay. i love reptiles it's really so weird listen. he never he did this really weird thing i went out of town well, and he can tell you want to talk about it uh, yeah, yeah. I I just felt like it was like um I went back to like my childhood uh so what did you do? What did you, you get? And I just adopted a few reptiles. I got a blue oh, tongue skin. Uh, I mean um 
Oh, well, okay. And then it's like, I'm the client that's like, oh my God, he's going like, to side with oh, him. Oh, cool. Uh, I mean, not cool. that's not Yeah, uh, blue tongue skinks. I oh, leave. I'm like, we got to get a new therapist. This guy blue sucks. Blue tongue skink. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I have one. You guys start growing sorry, around. Can I ask you, where did you get into that? Okay, because I've been talking with this dealer. He keeps not returning my calls. I really want to get this, this skink. And I have this, uh, I have a gecko too. I have a, a, five, a gecko? five tongue, five tongue gecko. What's the gecko? It's a, it's a crested gecko. Oh, he's a gecko. So cool. <laughs> but everything that he bought is twenty. He lives twenty years. I'm like, Todd, you made some like really, really like serious. Man, this but is cool good. though. This is cool. No, no, no. I'm I got happy some about poison dart about frogs it. too. I'm happy cool. about it, but wow. it is funny. Every time I go out of town, I come back and there's like a new tank in our house. I want to see this. They're really cute. Yeah, that's and cool. the, the skink is so cute, but he's like still scared of us. Well, I mean, it's a skink. It's like, what's it going to do? Be like, hey, how's it going? I'm friendly It'll be enough. Awesome. No, but they, they said they get really friendly they and they'll like, watch TV with you and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's not watching TV. It's like. <laughs> but it'll chill and catch really you. Really a skink? Yeah. It's a blue tongue skin. It's like a big fat He's wow. so fat. He's like overweight. He got an obese one. <laughs> Where's it from? Um, Indonesia. Ooh. It's an Indonesian blue tongue skink. He likes like Indonesian food? food? What is Indonesian food? It's, the best food. it's almost like Filipino food. But yeah. tell me what. It's give me like, an example. I think nasi goreng is uh, Indonesian. Maybe that's, I think that's Malaysian. Maybe it's like fried rice. Got some. Somebody's egg in getting there. canceled on TikTok. Yeah, go ahead and cancel me. Go ahead, try. Go try. I got nothing. Cancel me for uh for loving a food. Boy, this podcast is getting offensive. By oh the way. no, guys! Y'all ready to get offended? Are you ready to get offended? I'm sorry, but I'm not one of these woke comics, okay? Look, I'll say stuff like, uh, you know what? Kids suck. You know what I'll I'm say? Not a fucking edgy. woke comic. Biden's old. Watch out, baby. Uh, I tell you what, Biden can do. Uh, he can suck my dick after Trump does. I'm not woke. <laughs> I'm not one of these woke comics. I'm, I'm anti woke. <laughs> It's so funny. We like will jokingly be like, "You guys ready to get offended?" And everyone's like, "Woo, yeah!" Like, like, we're kidding. <laughs> Here's something that's not offensive at all. <laughs> well, it's just like, what do people even think is offensive? Yeah, they never say anything offensive. I mean, everything's offensive to someone. Nothing's offensive to some yes. people. It's like the thing where um, nothing matters. Everything's everything. I went on Huberman's um, Instagram. Andrew Huberman. You know who he is? He's like as. He's like a science. Intellectual. He's like an intellectual science. Okay. Guy. He's great. I He's love. He's a scientist. I, He's a scientist, and but he does like a podcast. He's like a Bill Nye kind of thing. He's like a handsome. He's like a a handsome neuroscientist. So everyone's like, "Oh my gosh, let's hear what he has to say." But so, um, (laughs) so I'm friends with him on Instagram, and he wrote something about Adderall, and I was like, "Hey, I haven't had time to like watch this. It's good to snort it, right?" And it was like people like loved it because nobody's like joking with him ever. Yeah. So and he was like, "Please don't." And then everyone like underneath is like, "Ah ha ha," you know. And then one person's like. So you're the reason my son and I have a shortage of Adderall and can't take it. <laughs> and you're just like, uh, lady, I'm definitely not the reason. Yeah. And also. Sorting, it's not, it's actually not fun. It doesn't help it at all. It was just a joke. Yeah. It's just like to be cool. No, well, I used to always say on road trips, I would snort Adderall to. Um, stay awake. At a, no, 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 on a Taco Bell. Taco Bell. Wait, say that again? It was just my thing. On, I just would stop at a Taco Bell and snort an Adderall. Oh. Does snorting Adderall help? No, it actually makes it less effective when your nose hurts. Yeah, and it makes you feel like you're going to have a panic attack. I did it one time. I'll never do it again. You're so bad, you did. Yeah. I didn't know you were a bad kid. What do you mean? What's a bad kid? Dangerous. Snorting Adderall is that bad? No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Vaping's bad. Vaping. He's a vapor. He's a vape lord. He's going to be real upset. I think it's going to kill us all. I really do. I think it's like 10 times worse than smoking. Do you vape? I have done it, but I always throw it in the trash. It doesn't feel good to me. No, it makes me feel sick. We used to smoke cigs together, didn't we? I still smoke cigs. You do? Well, like once a week. That's cool. Literally, I smoke about, uh, I will lose a pack of cigarettes before I will finish it. That's so cool. It's not that cool. It's just like random. No, no, as someone that like can't smoke without just, I'll smoke when I don't want to. It's like, I just like wake up early to smoke. Yeah. I don't get that. I saw someone. I wish. Hey, I love like, yeah. You see people smoking in their cars still today. It's like, wow. Are you from like fucking. Like, <laughs> we were just talking about this today about like, you know, the kids whose like parents Latvia smoke. Or some, yeah. And they would come to school like just fill, fully smelling because it would be winter and their parents would just right. be hot box in the car. That with actually never happened to me. Really. You see the kids like <laughs> in the back. I didn't know anyone whose parents smoked when I was growing up. I really didn't. Really? Yeah. I think it was because everyone I grew up with was like like doctor's kids and stuff mm. and they were all healthy and nerdy and were stuff. Were your parents doctors? Yeah, my dad was a doctor. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. What kind of doctor? He's a colon rectal surgeon. Are you fucking kidding me? No. 
come to the show, guys. Uh -huh. I'm sure this is a part of it, right? Um, not How really. Your dad no. manifested this. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I, I guess it's possible. <laughs> it's cool though. That's of all the ailments to have, where you could just like go to right. your own house and be like, Dad, what's is this normal? <laughs> yeah, I was really. Has start... your dad seen your grown asshole? Um, he has, right? I don't think so. No. You didn't show it to him to check it out? Why would I do that? If my mom was a gynecologist and I had something no, itching that's and painful. No, different. That's different. And it's I the even, same thing. If your mom's a gynecologist. I'd be like, uh, mom, is this some weird? Some stuff belongs not in the home. What if your dad was a gynecologist? No, that's such a good question, Todd. God, you've really ended the whole combo. And that's why she's a, And that's why you guys came to therapy. He's a kid. <laughs> so... Annie's dad was what a gynecologist. A <laughs> Annie's dad was a what skink, skink slash was a gyno, a gyno skink. I'm like very excited for the day this skink hangs out with us. I feel like he's going to get along with our dog too. Do you have a dog? Yeah. What kind of dog is it? He's a multi poo, but not oh, really. Right. I know what you're talking about. It's like a almost medium sized sort of, you know. He's not dog. like anything you've ever seen. Really? He's a real goofy guy. You'd like him. I bet he's I like a funny him. Guy. I like all dogs. I know. Dogs Pretty are much. great. Did you get a new one yet? No. Nope. Not yet. Sorry. Yep. I asked you in a weird, at a weird time the other day too. I was like, how's your dog? And you're like, uh, literally just died. Why would you do this to yeah. me? Okay. New topic. Back to yeah. skinks. Back gotta to get skinks. a reptile, baby. I would like to get a reptile, but they're so impersonal. You know? They, I know you say that. And I like reptiles a lot. I really like observing them and stuff. But I think having one would ruin them for me. Does it have mm -hmm. it like always be around? I want to have it be, a, a I want to see event. it in nature. I've seen a lot of cool reptiles in nature. That's but what's I, cool because um, I have a bioactive enclosure for it. What's that? So you, it's a bioactive enclosure is you put like the right substrate in and you put real plants oh. and you put like isopods and springtails in it and it Damn. cleans itself when it shits like the bugs eat the shit. This sounds and big, just, right? Big? The skink is big. Yeah, it's pretty big. But how big is this enclosure? It's pretty big as well. It's, it's like, like a room. It's like almost four <laughs> feet. No, it's, all, it's like a four foot. This sounds right. really cool, but this also just sounds, I don't know where I put that right he, now. I just have to tell you the thing, the issue that I'm worried about is he started this, this hobby one month ago. He has so many already. That, like, you're and in I the sweet him, spot right now. This is the sweet spot of the hobby. But I'm, af I'm afraid. Yes. I'm a, a little worried about the future. You do want a snake now, though, don't you? Ooh, I do want a I snake. Want, you want a snake? What kind of snake do you want? Like a python, I want a big right? One, yeah. Those ones are actually very personal, yeah. like ball pythons. I just yeah. don't want anything that would really kill my dog. Well, that would ball kill your dog. No, ball pythons don't. They they, they're very peaceful. Yeah, they're. What do they do? They eat food. Right? Yeah, but if they eat like you have feed it smaller food. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. I wouldn't mean, it be it's cool? Get as I would big love to be. A... I'm like becoming that type of pick me girl. <laughs> a snake person. Yeah, I was talking to Josh Wait, what's Potter a about it. Me girl? A pick me girl is like a girl oh, who's pick like me, pick me. Yeah, right? she's like, pick me. She's like, I'm not like the other girls. I like snakes. Okay, right. I a play video games. I'm cool, but like, not that you can't. I think it's so like sexist to say that too, because then it's like, but what if those are your interests? Yeah, it's like saying women can't have interests that like men have without like wanting. But the truth is, if I look back on most of my most of my interests, they have been for. The attention of men. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. But I don't know if that's because I was diddle, 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 diddle. But what about but, the snake? That's That feels kind of phallic. It feels like a male attention thing. Yeah. But do you, why do you want a snake? For the attention. Okay. But from everyone. Not from the, and not for the, uh, and not giving the snake attention, not to be around a snake. I would, no, I would drop it. The camera's off, drop in that snake. It would snake. be cool to that's have, That's why I'm going to get up with my dog, because yeah. he, he will be dropped, the snake. I would like to get a snake. I wanted a snake as a kid. I had a campaign in my house. I made like 15 posters and put them up like on the medicine cabinet, like hit him all over the place. It's like, you don't have to walk a snake. Like uh, all this stuff, like reasons why I could get, wanted a snake. I never got a snake, but now I was thinking about getting a, um, it's called a rat snake. It's like these big fucking yeah, yeah. snakes that live in California. Cool. I thought about getting one and maybe keeping it in the backyard. Mm. To cut down any kind of rodent population in there, but I think it, I like a, it, it would could escape would kill you, rats. Is the idea? It would kill oh, do you rats. have the same house with the pool? Uh no, I live in Burbank now. Okay, yeah. Are you gonna have another crawfish boil? Um, probably at some point. Yeah. Can I be invited this time? Yes. There's been two years in a row I wasn't invited, and <laughs> it's the it, there was an earthquake, but it was really just me being okay. angry. I'll invite you. I not very everyone much know, have not everyone knows about it. <laughs> I very much enjoyed the. I got invited like two years, I think, and then no more invites. Did I, I didn't did invite I blow you this it? year? Yeah, did I blow it? I didn't have one this year, but I know you canceled it. Someone told me. Are you serious? People rat you out. Are you kidding me right now? Are you People serious? Rat you out. Yeah. Oh my fucking god! No, I'm not, I wouldn't be mad at you, but I want to go. I just want I you to I know. I invited you. I wasn't invited, but it's okay. Also, it was a, 
But it's no, okay. No, no, I understand no. I, this. I'm not taking it personally. I'm just saying I want in. If you're willing. I if you want in, I definitely want you to be there. Yes. That's the difference. If you want to go, I want you to I be there. I was there the year you got the tattoo. Oh, so you were at the best one. It was very good. So what are you talking about? You've been to the crawfish boil. I just just saying I want to go back. I don't know if I blew it or something. I don't think Did you I make blew any mistakes? It at all. I think what happened was is I moved to a different house. And I uh, was pressured by my wife to tone it down, <laughs> tone down the guest list uh, dramatically. Because, it was so fun. It was a who's yeah, that, who. That was a fucking. It was, was a, a who's good one. who. That was a good one. I, everywhere I turned, I love parties. I just love. Yeah. This is why I like the comedy store too, because I like to go into each. You just go into a conversation. You have your little fun. Everybody right. riffs, does a little laugh. Pop someplace else. Pop to another one. It's just all night. Yeah. Then I'm the last one. They're like, hey, guys, any more little groups? To talk? That's no, ADD. Just me. That's definitely ADD. But it's my favorite. There's no commitment. Every yeah. every group is good at a Johnny Pemberton party. Yeah, it was, a, it was a good group. Oh, it was good. I think it helps to have a pool. That's the nice vibe. I love those valley houses that have pools, mm -hmm. like the old 1950s valley houses. 100%. Oh, my God. That's what I want to get. I want to get, a, get a, one of those houses now. I always wanted one of those like porn star looking houses where it's like- yeah. The, the kind of like meandering, yeah. There's a lot of space back there. Yes. There's like a little section off to the side. It's, it's like, like people it's are kind of grown ups are swinging. Yes, that kind Couples of thing. Are just maybe not swinging. that. Maybe more people talking. Maybe just people like maybe people smoking. Maybe someone's vaping. There's a naked girl on roller skates. Yes. There's this guy in my neighborhood. I see almost anytime I go to do a walk or a hike. Naked. It's the street next to me. And it's this really cool, big lot, double lot, old uh, Spanish style house. I love this house. I want this house so bad. I see this guy. He looks like he's like late 30s, 40s, kind of like uh, disheveled looking. But he's always standing at the end of the driveway, smoking a vape oh. like it's a cigarette. Like he's standing out there. It's so, I've seen it yes. five times now. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? It feels kind of like the, what's the guy from Psycho? Um, Norman Bates. Norman Bates. He, like his mom's in like there somewhere. Like someone's dead in his house. And she's like, don't. Vape in the house. Don't vape in, vape in the house, Daryl. She has to go out to the end of the driveway. And he's going. It like, seems like, like when people do that, they're mad at someone. Oh my god, it's so weird. Smoke. I want to talk to him. Be like, yeah. hey man, what's going on? But the problem is, if you see him a lot, yeah. if you start the talking, because I am so guilty of this, I ruin every coffee okay. shop, every really? person. Why? I because I break the floodgates, and then it's just I've gotten to, into deep. Oh, people start to talk to you. Yes, or I ha I cannot control myself talking to them. Yeah, and what what do you mean you can't like stop like, talking I, to a stranger? I, oh, I talk to strangers so much. You do. You've like you and Lizzie one time Facetime me in a coffee shop, and I was secondhand embarrassed for you guys how loud you were in this coffee shop. I'm like what the f is? Hey, that was when um, Lizzie okay, Lizzie let's, got let's... locked in the bathroom. Lizzie always, there's always something like that happening. I bet that's, it's a very Lizzie thing. When she had the peacock that can was I like tell harassing you? her. I, got, I said, Lizzie, can I tell you, Annie, <laughs> I got locked in a bathroom for 47 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I had to drink my own penis or not. Oh my what? God. It does follow her. Yeah. She's so funny. She is the hilarious. Mm -hmm. I know. I want Lizzie come on my podcast. Oh, um, I think she would. She would, yes. Yeah. We've been in talks. It's a thing. Yeah, I know. Because I like things. This is advertised. Remember when I said I like things? No, we buy Instagram things. This is an Instagram thing. She likes things, everyone. No, 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 she no. likes My things. My business manager literally was like, you have got to stop doing this. And the minute he gave me the, okay, I bought this. He's like, please stop just buying things. And then he was like, all right, we're doing good. And I, I bought this um, like within 10 seconds. Well, what is that? It's just a water bottle, It's a right? water. It's a, it's a hot water bottle. It has the. It's um, an insulated water bottle. It's being stirred right now. Wait, what? Can I see that? Go on, can I see that? Can I see? Oh, it's going. It's going faster. Wait, what do you? Why is it? Why is it stir? Why? How so much you, does this cost? 45? I have no clue. <laughs> 40, I do not look at prices, Johnny. And you do. When I, I want something, prices. I do What's not. In here? When I want something, I get it. Is this AG one? No, but I do love AG1. But they're not sponsoring this podcast, so we're not talking about it. Wait, did they you, sponsor us here? How do you make yeah, it? They oh, they, okay, I love them. How do you make it go? You push the top. This? No, the other part. This. A visp. Turn it up a little more. Ooh. So stupid. This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. They got me good. My oh matcha. Oh my God, but it costs like $2 to make in China, and it probably paid $45. This is heavy. 
Three dollars. Yeah, because it's got liquid in it. That's why it's heavy. You're so mean to me on my own podcast. <laughs> I'm being host abused, host shame. Uh, I'm just getting started here. I'm, I can't. I know it's but. Oh, we love this. Okay, it's summertime and you are spicy, okay? Your genitals are spicing up this joint, okay? We are not having ethnic food, okay? We're about to be running around in those itty little bitty thong b bathing suit bottoms. Are and the time? last thing we need is butt odor, you know what I'm saying? We don't want booty odor, okay? That's disgusting. If you are into nasty, stinky butt odor, do not. Get Lumi, okay? Because this stuff works and it makes you smell so good. Neutral to amazing. Neutral to amazing. Lumi is the world's best whole body deodorant, which means you can put it anywhere to control odor for 72 hours. Wow, that's now, amazing. Now, my favorite product is the... Um, what toasted is it? coconut. Toasted coconut. I was like charboiled coconut. Charboiled eggs. <laughs> Delicious. It's so good. I'm wearing it right now. Turn I love your charboiled eggs into a toasted coconut. Yeah, you should just <laughs> lather up your eggs with this. No, it actually is the most delicious smelling. Guys, get it, and you're going to totally agree with me. It smells so good. I love it so much. We have two of the tubes of it, and Todd still won't let me bring it because if we leave it somewhere, we're devastated. True. And go ahead, pop some Lumi in your butt crack under your boobs or on your vulva. Nobody can tell you no. Nobody can. Go ahead, put it can. on your vulva. These are wipes I use before Todd eats my cookie. <laughs> He likes he and likes a sweet cookie, like a not as he likes sweet sweet cookies, not savory. He doesn't want to. He didn't want a meat pie, you know. This is my favorite part. It's created by an OBGYN. Lumi has the ingredients you can trust to be effective and safe for your whole body. Look at she's look she's how easy this cook. is. Look how this is a shower. Oh my goodness, she just took a shower. She doesn't no, no I'm, I'm literally showering on my own podcast. Let me smell that. Ooh, it smells good. <laughs> So, ooh, it smells like a, uh, uh, like the bottom of a ship. <laughs> yeah, it's clean. But it's, the ship has been cleaned, washed, washed. It's pH balanced for the below the belt use, aluminum free, baking soda free, and paraben free. Guys, I will literally never use another deodorant. Toasted coconut is my. It, it's so good. Like everyone's like, why are your ads so long? Because I don't know how to explain to you how much I love this deodorant. Get it? Comment below. Use our code. I'm telling you. It's. The I've, I've gotten word that people have been using our code and people have been buying it. So it's. Uh, it must be a great product. And speaking of musk, your musk is gone when you get Lume. <laughs> Lumi starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, just a coconut, cream. Tube deodorant, okay, and two free products of your choice and free shipping. I recommend these wipes. They're great for on the go when you want to get your cookie eaten in your car. As a special offer for you fannies out there, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code Annie at LumiDeodorant.com. That's over 40% off your starter pack when you visit LumiDeodorant.com and use promo code Annie. I'm going to be straight with you. Your booty smells. Ooh, -wee! good thing we got this beautiful, beautiful product that I love so much and I use every single day of my goddamn life. Guys, this is a very booty clean centric <laughs> podcast episode. Okay, <laughs> we love our clean booties. Listen, I don't know what my life was like before I had a bidet, but I'll tell you, it was a little crusty and stinky. There was a little crust. There was a little dingleberries up there. There were some dingleberries. You know, you got to, I'd have to use, I used to have, before Hello Tushy, I used to take Annie out in the back. She'd have to bend over, I have to spray her hole with a hose. He used to have to hose not, me down. <laughs> it was not, we, not we had time a, We actually were doing, we would do like these short form improv sketches too. It was called Hose Line Is It Anyway? And he would squirt my butt and then I would have to do like an act out and we would be different animals and stuff. It was really cool. Wayne Brady would come over. It was actually really awesome. You guys should check it out. Um, and if you're not using a bidet, you're doing it wrong, okay? Hello Tushy gets your butt twice as clean as wiping and saves up to 80% on toilet paper. Oh my God, I love that. I love saving the environment. I and have I, been spending I my stinky ass 
I've been spending my stinky ass on toilet paper. I almost went broke. Do you know how much money I made last year? So much money. And I almost went broke buying toilet paper. So guys, get this Hello Tushy uh, product bidet and do what I do, which I use the Todd the technique. One. He the uses Todd the badge one. He goes back and forth. I go, I blast it, and then you get the little the knob, and you just go click, 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 back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and it creates a sprinkler effect all down your crack, all over your hole, and it just makes a clean. It and cleans safe your neck, place. your back, your pee pee, and your crack. The Hello Tushy bidet costs under $100 and fits into your existing toilet. No electricity or additional plumbing needed. And it pays for itself in just a few months. So stop touching your own poo and spreading it everywhere you touch. It's like our bathroom used to be... It was covered in doo-doo. Yeah, <laughs> we used to leave each other notes like in our poop. You know, it would, I would be like, Todd, the cleaning lady the used to be like, oh my goodness, again, there was poop on the ceiling. We had our cleaning lady scrubbing it. And scrubbing. I'd be like, you missed a spot here. You missed a spot here. You missed a spot there. It was a little rude, honestly. He was just standing over her like that. Um, and <laughs> as he'd point, poop would fall off his finger. It was like just so disgusting. So stop touching your own poop. Try Hello Tushy with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. Wow, I would love to work in that factory, getting all those tushies back. But they don't. No one sends their tushies back. Yeah, that the, whoever works that part of the uh, the company is just bored all day. Getting paid back. for free, doing nothing. Nobody sends them back. <laughs> With over 100,000 five-star reviews, see why millions of people already love Hello Tushy and be a part of taking care of your business the cleaner way. Go to hellotushy.com slash Annie and use promo code Annie to get 10% off plus free shipping on your first bidet order. Bidet, 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 ole. That's hellotushy.com slash Annie for 10% off. We, okay, so we're talking about the Nick Nolte thing. Right. It always comes back. Yeah. And we just saw an article today, I don't know if you saw it, that they have canceled that new show, The Idol, because of the behavior of The weekend. Yeah, I heard that. That is so funny. Also, because it's probably a piece of shit show. <laughs> you like it. I they like fired it. one of the best directors in Hollywood right now, Amy Simons, and they fired her for some unknown reason. From that show? From that show. Or I can't think of what exactly happened. I don't have the details right, but they fired her. And it's like, obviously, this is what you get, guys, for wanting to have this like precious event thing, and it's a piece of trash, and it's also... Behind the scenes is toxic. It like yes. just makes sense. That guy seems like he'd be a dick too. We <laughs> love, but it's so funny that he's not an actor. He's a singer, and that this yeah. is his first moment. And he's like, he just took that part of acting. <laughs> that I'm gonna be yeah. method acting outside being an asshole. This is your first project, dude. That happens all the time, I think, with people because they don't know what to. They don't know how to act because they think like they're just not. I think it happens to people who are insecure. Yeah. Well, right? they got You got to watch the that Andy documentary uh, the weekend. The Andy and, um, you know, the thing with Jim Carrey, Andy and Jim. Remember that documentary they did where he was playing about Andy him playing Kaufman. Andy Kaufman? Right. Wait, the documentary about... There was a documentary about what a piece of shit Jim Carrey was playing Andy really? Kaufman. How he was like method acting the whole time. And everyone was like, he Andy Kaufman was doing a character and he was not mean to us. Oh, yeah. like, he was like, totally took it too far. <laughs> I didn't know that. I mean, it's, it's not, great. It it's sense. really cool. Yeah. It's really cool. I, haven't, I, haven't I like Jim Carrey because Jim Carrey's like... He's he's gone through a lot of like waves. He's like open about it. He's very yeah, he's like a classic nut. He's a nut. Bad dad. Not bad dad. Weird dad. Remember? Yeah. His dad like told him he didn't believe in him or something. Something. Do you That's know what takes. I was laughing about? Barry Rothbard's old joke. Do you remember Barry had a joke about? Yeah, about dancing. Um, something about like, son, you can't be a ballet, a ballet yes. dancer. And he's like, you just made your son the world's greatest ballet <laughs> dancer. Something like that. Yeah, so but funny. I think about it all the time. And he was like, Justin Bieber like had a documentary and he was like, it was when Justin Bieber was like 18. He's like, they all said I couldn't do it. He's like, who are these grownups telling Justin Bieber this child he can't do it? <laughs> Happens all the time. There's so many comedians I know who have told me stuff about their parents. I'm thinking like, what the oh. f yes. Your mom at nine years old told you like, this drawing is terrible. <laughs> this well, drawing is absolutely disgusting. I can't believe you'd ever do this that's again. That's so weird you're saying that because what I was crying about is how my mom will not like acknowledge I'm good at drawing. <laughs> I, even now? Or do you it's mean very weird. Like she loves me. Okay. She, we, we cry yeah. until each other love each other. She yeah. cannot give it to me that my drawings are good. She goes, hmm. Do you think that's worse? I think that's worse than being not around. Can I tell you something I though? Is. Can I, really I tell do. you something? This is the weird part and we've yeah. been laughing about it. <laughs> 
Because I tell her, I'm like, it's weird. And she's like, well, what? I'm not going to lie. I'm like, but it is good. It's like, it's undeniably a good drawing. Well, it's not good to her. And all I have to say is, mom, I'm sorry, but you don't have any taste. Yeah, you like, know? why would you not think? By the way, I'm your daughter. She's artistic. So it's like, you gave me this skill set. But also, That's not I'm true. Like, she might not have. It's probably not from her. It's from my seeking her approval. Or it's from your grandmother, actually. Oh, yeah, it might be. Time stuff but my mom was adopted. Well, so we don't know, but she was an artist. Yeah. Her mom was an artist. My mom's an artist. Okay. But so this is what I was thinking. So I've been doing these daily drawings, which I've been lack, slacking on, but. So not daily. When I was sitting, but they were daily for, you know, well, I did about nine not, days. Not every day. They're not really daily. Are they? <laughs> I think what you meant to say was I've been doing some drawings. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I'm just over here with my full colon. Um, so, okay. So, yeah, I hope you like that. <laughs> Enjoy colon cancer. <laughs> he just put a hex on me. Okay. So, <clears throat> so, but I look at the drawings I did after I was sitting next to me. Okay. So, before I was sitting with my mom, I was just sketching just bullshit drawings. This is drawings. like recently? Yes. Okay. Then I go on family vacation like a couple weeks ago. And I'm sitting next to my well, mom. You and she's done like, that for one. But listen, I'm sitting with my mom. Wow. I'm drawing. I'm doing my hand drawings, right? And she's like, hmm. So then I'm like adding more shadow. And I'm like, oh she's my like, God. Ugh. And then I'm like trying harder. And then all of a sudden it's like lifting off the page and it's so good. You got noted. And I did it like four times, right? Like in a row. And my mom just like nailing these the best drawings I've ever done in my life. Okay. Really? Then I come home, I start drawing it, they're trash. I need my mother's disapproval to be wow. good. So I'm like looking at it like I'm no longer even a little bit upset. It's like I'm a, craving it's like a hockey it. coach or something. It's got to be mean. It was like, crazy. Get out there and fucking make me proud. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to get beat. But it worked, mom. Family you're right. vacation, though? Yes. Is my that nephews. Mandatory? No, no, no. I fly out. I do it. Todd can't even come. Wow. It's just me. I do need Todd with me next time, though. It's yeah. hard to go back to like, your you childhood me? without your like grown up family with you. Yeah, I can't be around my family alone anymore. It just stresses me out too much. It's very well. It's you just insane. regress for me at least. I just find it to be like, oh, this is um, people who refuse to go to therapy, and this is what happens. You're my parents totally are unaware. My family's your... all very therapy ish. Okay, well, so that maybe it's different for you guys. And it's cute. It's like my mom and I meditate together. It's cute. Oh, so that's nice. Yeah. And my nephews. It's really about the kids too. It's like so fun to hang out with the kids. But they also. So they used to be bad, but then they've reformed. Mm -hmm. It's now they're good. Yeah. And so you can kind of bond over and them. And we can now talk about it. They don't get mad at me about talking about it or anything. Wow. That's interesting. It's yeah. good. I feel very lucky Yeah, that we get to work it out. But now it's sad because they're old. So it's like. What do you mean? Being around them. They just have like elderly people problems that are like oh. kind of my problems because I'm their kid. I mean, they're going to die. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, I'm going to have to help yeah. them. It's going to suck. Yeah. I'm going to have to help them it's die. like the worst thing, right? It's number one. I, I guess maybe not because it's like it's normal that you. Well, like if Todd died, yeah. that would probably be the worst. Yeah, that'd like be if terrible. Todd just like my loved one that I thought I was gonna have my whole life with is just dead. That would be tragic, <laughs> right? But it's like the weird thing about our parents dying is like we know it's gonna happen. Yeah, Oof. it's like an animal, but we're not gonna talk about that. We're not going there. Right. <laughs> but right. it is like this, like okay, this well, is gonna we all happen. Know we're gonna die. It's all like every we know everything, but we just don't really I feel know. it. We just. Say we know it, but we feel Treat it. Williams die of a, on a... How did he die? He died on a motorcycle. He was like pretty old. He was like... Really? Well, he wasn't pretty old. He was like 70s, but... Yeah. He was still like young. He had a motorcycle old. crash? Yeah. Still sucks. Sad, dude. Probably shouldn't have been riding a motorcycle. It is, I know. <laughs> I'm not motorcycle girl. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's something someone told me a long time ago. There's people who are uh, who have been in a motorcycle accident, and there's people who are going to be in a motorcycle oh, accident. Oh, I like that. There's yes. no... Just, that's all it is. I was in a scooter accident that was really bad. I know that sounds oh. like that sounds the word, the so word, ridiculous. Because the word scooter is the yeah, word. Yeah, you're scooter. right. It's just like, the, such a silly scooter. Just, like imagine your name scooter. Like it's your doctor's name it was, was scooter. It's more of a scraper, if you know what I mean. <laughs> a scoot scrape. I was I was scraped, but I would ride my scooter and I had so much fun. What was but this? I was reckless. This was 2008. Oh, so it was your scooter? It wasn't a rental. Oh yeah, I owned it. I lived in Damn. Santa Fe. I, that was my Santa only Fe. Yeah. Seven years I lived there. Really? Yes. Wait, when did you move here? Uh, I moved to LA in 2012, but, but I moved to New, New York, York in 2000, end of 2008. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. Santa but I got Fe. my car accident Father's Day. Oh, my God. It's almost the anniversary of my scooter accident. Oh, what do you, what do, you do for Father's celebrating Day. that? Did you do something? Do you have like a thing you do? You oh, my Thai God. Food? <laughs> 
We should rent scooters. Are you scared of scooters? Scooter. Or no? no, we could do like Razor scooters. Or I something. love the rental ones. I fucking love. Oh my it. god, it's so fun. <laughs> Duncan always gives me shit about it. He says you're gonna kill yourself. I'm like no, well, problem, Duncan. Man. Here's the thing. No Duncan's problem. just so such a precious father now, which is yeah, so cute. Yeah, I guess so. This was before that even. Oh really? Yeah. I think it makes so. me sad. Like, not. I'm so happy for him and 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 his family, and right? they're great. And but I'm like, we're not gonna do Burning Man together. You guys are done with Burning. Yeah, Man? that's probably true. I bet it's done. And it's okay. I also, get it. Also, Burning Man's kind of, isn't it, in a way, like, okay. it's a little, it's a little bit, hey. <laughs> isn't Burning Man kind of, hey. I've heard Burning Man's kind of, gay. Hey. I've heard Burning Man's kind of, gay. Hey. Elon might last year, though. Oh, it's cool That's again. Right. Elon wants to be cool. That's how you know it's bad. I know. <laughs> Oh, like, Elon, ooh. remember when his chest got all big because he was taking those hormones? It did? <laughs> he started taking, like, whatever these, the HGH really? or whatever the guys are taking. I and they try all get that the same, shit. Like, Should I try it? You'll look so weird. You're going to get, like, a big barrel chest. Really? But also, there's a th weird thing that happens with men's faces. You can, you can tell with older male actors where they start to get, like, just wider in this weird way. Yeah. Like, Michael Shannon's not going to be able to walk through a door in 10 years. You know what I mean? That Which one's Michael Shannon? He's an actor with a large head, great actor, brilliant yeah. actor. What does he do? He's the guy who always talks uh, like this. He's, um, you guys are going to go in there and there's going to be a problem. <laughs> I can't really do so his voice right now. The, the water person? He was like the guy trying to... I don't know what you're talking about, talking man. About? Well, hey, what about the about fish? That... Oh. Yeah. I didn't watch I that movie. I think about Colin Farrell? <laughs> <laughs> well, Colin Farrell's in that movie, right? Oh, the water one? Shape of Water? I never saw that Shape movie. Shape of Water, yeah, yeah. I never I mean, saw that movie. I, I never saw it either, he's actually. The bad guy, Michael I never saw it, so. <laughs> What's your, what are you working on now? Anything good? Um, that you're allowed to talk about? Well, I guess I can talk about. I was working on something, but it's not going to come out until March so of next year, probably. Is so. it cool? It's fucking cool what as is hell. It? It's can a it? video game adaptation of a, of a video game Fallout. Really cool. Fallout, Whoa. yeah. Is it a shooty one? Uh, sort of. It's like a very unique game. It's been around for like twenty years. It's like one of the most, I don't know. It's one of the most I love that famous game. games there is. Really, I Not play famous. a lot of it's it. Like a, it's a, it's a cult game. What would you say? Is it's it like a, a very comedy or are you playing in a drama? It's a comedy, but it's not. I mean, the game itself is comical, but it's very dark. Yeah, and I see the show is trying to mimic that, and I think that's a lot of what I'm doing on the show. Is like this. It's like gallows humor kind of thing, you know, like these. It takes place in the, the game. It takes place. It's like uh, 200 years in the future. And there's been nuclear fallout. And there's all these people trying to survive. And so mm. there's, it's, all, it's very complicated, but they, that's like the reality of life. So everything's very grim. So there's a lot of like jokes about just, you know, like the, what's the worst thing? But we're like, oh, I used to do this and it's terrible. And no, but it's no big deal because it's like put through the lens of like the 50s too. Yeah. So this weird kind of, it's like a if you play like a doo wop song while someone's getting stabbed in the chest. That's Ooh, sort of the, I like that. That's like the um the vibe. Yeah, it's gonna be really very very cool. I think. Are you a video game guy? Kind of, not like big time. I don't. Like, had you played that before you got the? I had watched people play it. Yeah. I like to. I don't like to play those games. They're too involved for me. I get like, ugh. I got the game Metal Gear Solid. It's a big game. It took me six months to finish that game. Playing it. Actually, longer than six months, almost a year. I played it in three spurts because I got so stressed out playing it. I had to stop it. I lived with a guy who was playing um, Conan. Was it Conan? Yeah. That Conan. game. Conan That's a game. Exile. Oh, and it was so like <laughs> I was losing. We we had moved our our bed into the living room for the game, <laughs> for the game, and to like be together because yeah. he wanted to play the game the whole time. Oh and so the living room was like nicer than the bedroom. Yeah. And it was, the kitchen was there. So it was like, yeah. <laughs> so we just like lived like cracked in style, like in this. And so my whole life was like next to him. And I was smoking a lot of weed then. Mm -hmm. Just why I was so anxious. I was like, I literally was because losing my mind. Like, Ooh, <sighs> right. No, it, was, it would be game. like, it would be like, you'd feel like you were safe. And then you'd like lean back on a rock and it would be a dinosaur. And it would like turn. And I'm like, oh, ah, shit. like nothing was safe. And yeah. I just, 
I was like, this is, and he had PTSD from other things. And so he would like have night terrors. And I'm like, I don't think this is helping the night. He was like feeding the stuff. Night terrors? Yeah. You ever wow. live with someone with night terrors? No, I have not. He would lunge at me and be like, I'm dead. I'm dead. But like so scary. I'm like, am I I'm dead too? Dead? Yeah. He would think he was dead. Oh. Scary. There's, uh, I know this couple that was in the Peace Corps together and they both, uh, one of them got really bad diarrhea. And there's a story that they tell where in the middle of the night, she wakes up and she grabs her boyfriend. She goes like, I'm shitting, I'm shitting. <laughs> <laughs> this made me think about that. Like the night chair, seven night chair is you're shitting your pants because some some tropical virus in your yes. system. It's similar. That's probably what he felt was happening. I'm shitting. I'm that shitting. was his reality. <laughs> oh my God, it was so scary. Uh, that sounds terrible. It sounds like a, a good boyfriend. <laughs> Yeah, I Night kind of, you know what I had to do? You know what I had to do? What was great about that relationship? Because it was still, it was like, there were a lot of craziness. Yeah. But it was good for me to like, learn like, oh, wait. I like, don't want this. Like, right. I want like, Todd's like, securely attached. He's calm. Mm -hmm. He's funny. He's not like. Takes care of reptiles. We're never like, it's not a roller coaster with him. It's just like, it's chill. Not, it's not a, like a. Drama, dramatic thing. Exactly. Where, like, I don't need that hit of like adrenaline yeah. all day. I was like, always like, I would have to go on like walks and like listen to like meditations oh and stuff because it was like, I was, it was, that's wars interesting. Out at home. And it made me crazy too. Like, it wasn't I like bet. just him. It's contagious. Yeah. But like, Todd and I have never like sparred. <laughs> it took you a long time to find that word. <laughs> We've never had sex or we're virgins. Never. <laughs> I had dinner <laughs> together. That long? We've never touched. So you're gonna get a snake and let it out into your yard? No, I can't. You can't. Everything I want to do, it's instantly negated by someone who is correct. Yes. Someone you have who's someone. like, um, no, don't do that. And you're like, oh yeah, I shouldn't do that. The other day, I came back from a run and I was convinced. Oh, you know what? Because I had this truck. I, have I a thought truck. I said I run. I came back from a run. Okay. Now I got it because you were hey, being run. so normal about it. And I was like, I came back. Run. I was like, Jesus, you just came back? Right. I came back from Iran. I was Iran. so tired. I came back from Iran. <laughs> and uh, it was cool there. And I, uh, I used to have a, this huge creed, creed decal on the bumper of my truck, like massive, like, like this big. It says Creed in the font of the big I creed. love that. And that was great. And I, I took it off about six months ago just because that's scary. It's going to get burned into the paint. But I was thinking about getting the car wrapped now. Yes. You know, those vinyl wraps. And instead of doing just like the word Creed again, I thought about doing like a whole Creed truck, like putting the album color <laughs> cover weathered on the hood, human clay on one side and having like arms wide open on the other. Like Where just Scott Stapp's arms wide just open. Just the whole fucking truck, like make it like insane because it's a wrap, right? They can just print this. It's a digital wrap. I have it be like this insane psycho I'm Creed truck. I came back, I was thinking while I'm running, like, oh, I'm, like, Dude, I'm gonna do this. And I tell my wife, tell, tell Britt this, and she's like, then everyone's gonna know who you are. And you're I, gonna, that's like, why oh, I- yeah, you're right, okay. I was so, I was like getting so jealous. I was like, he doesn't care if people know who he is. Like, I got so excited about it, but I can't, that's the same thing. When I first got my Tesla, I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna wrap it like the gaudiest. Like, I was thinking yeah. like pink, then, pink, um, fatigue. For, what for fun. What's a fatigue? Yeah. Camo. camo. Pink camo. Yeah. For f the digital that would be one. Fun. <laughs> I mean, that's there's a tackiest like, and maybe like shiny. Totally iridescent. But then I was like, I you become will a target. Be murdered. You become a target. Not just everyone because, know where I live. Everyone. Yeah, it's not just because you're a celebrity. It goes beyond that. It's like a thing where you just stick out so much that anything you do doesn't go unnoticed. Right. You become like this thing, and you can't like. And even if you go into the store and people saw you getting out of that car, yeah. their eye is on you. But you know what, though? I have a counterpoint to this. I think that the Creed bumper sticker for me made driving a lot better because it basically, it's like you think of trucks, like a lot of times trucks are driven by aggressive drivers, like dudes who are macho and they want to like fucking, they do bad stuff and they're angry. They drive right. like assholes. Right. With the Creed sticker, the second you see that, you're like, oh, this is the greatest joke I've ever seen. <laughs> or you know they're I mean? like, this guy's Christian. That, either way, either make someone laugh or they think like, oh, 
He's a psychopath. <laughs> I like You're you. Like I like to have jokes everywhere. Like jokes I like to have great. jokes everywhere. It's the whole like, point of life, right? Exactly. I like to have as many jokes as possible. So it does kill me that I can't have a joke. So don't you think that's like okay? Out of my car. Do, do you ever weigh it? Because I think okay. I like to have privacy. It's really important to me. I don't like. I mean, I, I don't mind being recognized, but I don't really enjoy it sometimes because I feel like, you know, I'll be at a restaurant. I can. When someone looks at me twice, I know what they're thinking. I know exactly what it is. Have you ever not gotten it wrong? I got it mean? wrong at the airport. This guy was like coming up and I was like, I was like, I'm getting, and he was, and it was not, it was not a record. I was like getting like, oh, uh, no. Cause I'm always like Josh Potter was me. I was like, no. it's me. He was like, do you know how to get through the, cause it was like the airport was like, Ooh. but I had just gotten recognized <laughs> and I lost my computer. Okay. Oh my God. I haven't told this on the podcast yet. I was getting recognized going through TSA, going through the security. Right. And you know, if you take, you have to put your electronics in Do a separate bin. Do you want to finish pin. my point after the story? Or yes. Uh, okay, got it. Yes. Sure. Thank you. It's Annie Wood. You shut the I know. fuck up. That's why, that's why When I the asked. queen is speaking, you shut the fuck up. But so I, for, I'm, I put my electronics in the other bag or in the other bin. Yeah. I'm getting my backpack. I left a water bottle on it. So I'm going to security and they're having to go through my bag. And this guy like taps me and I was like, oh my God, are you? And I go, I am. And he was like, oh, I'm such a big fan, blah, blah, blah. Right. And I'm just so tickled by it mm -hmm. that I just zip my bag up and I go all the way to the gate and I get there and oh, I realize I've yeah. left my computer. My, and it was a comically far gate. Like it was 45 minute walk. Yeah. There was no tram. It should have been a no. tram. So I'm running back. I had leg day the day before too. So everything hurt. It was just like, I was punished. Like, my like, no, no, my no. vanity. No, I literally, Josh Potter's following me. He's like, my asthma. I'm like, we don't have time. <laughs> We're about to miss the plane. We're like, go, I'm running. I get there. They can't find my stuff. I was like, did I just get my shit stolen? No. But how funny would it have been if his wife, like, the was like, while he you? was doing that, his wife was just like oh, swiping that's a my good stuff. One. <laughs> Nudes are leaked. Everything's leaked. Did but you get it back? I ended up getting it back, but right. the next day it was crazy. But anyway. I definitely have that. I get flustered. I get really flustered when I get recognized because I feel like, like oh, oh, I I get so flustered. I get like, um, <laughs> oh, it's just not myself. Um, so finish your story. The point I'm saying is that, okay, you don't. I don't want to maybe get recognized or something. I don't want to. I don't want to infringe on my privacy by having right. this truck. But isn't it worth it maybe to enjoy life more to have this joke in my life? The, it, I am it's worth so one hundred percent on board. When you were talking about that, I literally yeah, almost I think teared up. It. I literally was almost, <laughs> I almost started crying. Like this, well, it's like your idea of the creed truck is so like in line with so what absurd. I love. Like it's it's like my favorite thing someone could and tell it me. It pisses off the best people. It pisses your off your wife. <laughs> well, I, she would she would actually probably like it. But yes. yeah, I'm something about like something that is such a joke like that. I feel like especially now. That we've all survived this fucking insane psychological yep. experiment that it's important to do stuff like that. Be as funny as possible. Just or just do something like, you know what I think would be funny is do this thing. Like, yeah. you know what I want to go? I want to go to fucking Mongolia. And I'm going to go, you know, some, something like that. I wanted to get a... You get your kicks off. Yeah, I totally... I think I, I'm for it. It's just, it's the safety of people knowing where I live. Kind of. Yeah, you know? it's unfortunate that that's the case. I know. I've been getting noticed in our apartment complex, though. You gotta it's, get a second car. That's the key. Yeah. You get a joke car. The you joke car. And you have to hide it in the should we wrap your Jeep? <laughs> but then but we have to park up my Tesla in the garage. Does your mailman know who you are? Yes, every she talks to every single person around you. Then they find out, they go, I didn't know you were well, oh. I had the this guy at a coffee shop happened. was like at a coffee shop in um in Marina Del Rey was or Manhattan Beach was like I live in the no West Side? Yeah. Oh, and wow. then I like, do you want the address, everybody? Um, but I go to a Rolf. I get Rolfing, like deep tissue massage. I thought you were about to say, I go to Rolf's. Like, I go to it's Ralph's. <laughs> I go to Rolf's. Like, what the fuck, Annie? And, and you're so mad at me for it. Rolf's? You're like, <laughs> uh, what the fuck? Rolf's? I don't think. <laughs> Rolf's. Rolf's. I know about Rolf's. Yeah, Rolf's. I get Rolf's. 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 It's like a, you know, massage type of massage. But I go kind of far to get it because yeah. I love this guy. How often do you go? Oh, uh, once a week or once every wow, two weeks. That's good. The guy that does it is so amazing. He's eighty-two. It's like Ooh, that's I feel the best. That's the best. I feel he's one of the top no, for guys. Real, that's a thing. No, I but swear he's to one God. of the top guys. He worked under <laughs> Mrs. Rolf you have to or whatever her name. Hook me is. up because I want to go. I will. He's amazing. I like the old folks. And he doesn't usually take new clients, but I think he'll take my rec. Okay. Because he's so special and he's he's like so cool. He's done a bunch of ayahuasca. So like he tells cool. me like the most amazing stories. 
And I got to do more stuff like this. And this I love him about. so much. And, and I feel so honored that he's like choosing to spend like the evening of life with me. He loves <laughs> right? me. He's always like, I, he's always like, I had to cancel when he goes like, oh, I'm going to miss you. Like we just love each other. That's cool. He's so cool. And his wife's a chiropractor. Okay. So his wife's a quack. Yeah. But he's <laughs> cool about it. He don't, he don't talk shit on it or anything. Yeah. But he's like, teaches me all about my body. Like all these different, like, Everything that's connected, really? where it goes. Yeah, because I had my cluster headaches and he couldn't cure my oh, cluster, cluster headaches. headaches. They get bad every two years. Ooh, that's right. It's every two years. What do you mean? I just spat. It's oh. only every two years I get them for a month and a half. Do you have, do you think it maybe is connected to something like sunspots? <laughs> sunspots. Sunspots when the sun has like a, you know, this flare up kind of thing. I can't figure oh. out what it is. That's interesting though. Any, yeah. any uh, ideas? There's, there's all kinds of weird stuff they connect with sunspots. It's kind of, well, that's just like other, you know, this is a Keep, put a note crazy in that. Stuff. Put a put, pin in that. For real, it Can might be sweaty my might be oh electromagnetic. My that's funny. Every no, but it's years. very weird. It does feel met it feels metallic. It's like it, I get zaps and yeah. stuff. It's my trigeminal and it's so it's so fucked oh, up. Oh, trigeminal nerve. Yeah, it comes from my trigeminal. And then it's like wow. I get like when I get a so I'm in the cluster cycle for a month and a half. God. And then I just get them throughout the day. And it's so painful. Yeah. Todd's seen it. I'm like. Yeah, I know about him. I, a friend of mine has him. He's a director. And he like had to direct half of this movie with, with those headaches. And I'm like. How, how was he able to do it? I mean, he directs with his brother. So I think yeah. they have like. He's able to. He has some sort of technique. I can't remember what he said. But he has like a way where the second it happens, he takes this medicine in the middle of the night. Or he tries. He has like a technique he deals with i guess well yeah because i always say like sometimes people have like not like accused me of lying but kind of been like this is a professional situation you need to come anyway and i'm like if For i what? was shooting a movie Profe what's a professional situation just things i had to cancel when oh, i right, had okay. the cluster headaches yeah and i'm like i don't know how to explain it to you. like if i was pay being paid 20 million dollars for a movie they'd have to recast me like that's yeah, how bad it's it is like debilitating it's, it's not, not like something a, where it's yeah it's not like a thing you can't I can grin and bear through. it yeah there's no yeah. todd like i've had cluster headaches through like four boyfriends mm -hmm. and thank God I got to, I mean, cause it's a lot. It really is a lot. It's yeah. like crazy. I'm like yeah. fucking screaming and crying. Oh, but I don't know why I brought those up. Oh, because my Rolfer, he was, he had so much like sadness and not being able to like cure them for me. He's like, oh, I did really? my, but I was like, but what was amazing was being able to go there and have him one as like a witness of my pain to see where like he could kind of like map right. out where it was for me, which, and then there was a thing. Cause I told him, I was like, it feels weird, but when I cry, it kind of light li lightens a little, a little bit. If I cry Ooh. really hard and he's like, it's this nerve right here, right by your tear duct. So he taught me that where it's like, sometimes if you like, and I think maybe that's why when I throw up, it feels a little bit better. It's like, <laughs> like, are you joking? No, but, but I thought it was like a bulimia joke just now. I thought you were making like a, <laughs> Makes me feel so skinny. <laughs> I always feel better when I fit in my Wait, pants. How often are you crying? You think during the cluster headaches? Or well, yeah. so I you don't cry that when much. You have cluster headaches. You cry. I'm crying makes you feel the better? entire time. Really? Well, I don't know what else to do. I'm in so much pain. Wow, that's so I interesting. I just cry. I do a lot of like why, like. But you know, are you weeping? Like I feel like weeping is different than crying, yeah. right? Because weeping Todd, to me is like you, abject you know. sadness, like just you know, your chest. Like I'm like. I'm, uh, like that okay so it's more of like a moaning not a weeping what do you think yeah it's definitely like a weeping i think like she's like we, we crying be, okay, how about I this will just so be like, so not sobbing right I sobbing sob. is different i will sob. to sob. me sobbing is i get like, to a sob sobbing's like, always <laughs> sobbing is the worst sobbing is i'm exhausted right i sob it's all yeah, of them it's a series of them, of them. Yeah. i try not <laughs> to i'm all. trying to like get through it you, you know? know what's not funny is i've actually never thought about like how different how many different cries there are <laughs> no it's crazy and that i experience them all in one that's moment. so funny it's so funny because i think i cried the most in my entire life in this past month yeah like it was so incredibly yes. sad i was kind of shocked at just being like taken over by the sometimes the grief of that is so I insane know. but you're like when you're crying like that it's this crazy thing where it's so physical. It's so strangely physical when you yeah. cry. Yeah. And I think it's great, though. I think it's like the greatest I thing. Making I think it's kind cry. of psychedelic yeah. in a way. Like well, grief so, is psychedelic. And it's relieving. It's like, it's the truth, right? Yeah. It's the truth. There's no like holding back and you can't. And you do it's, feel better it's, afterwards. It's such a release. Yeah. It's this thing where you do feel so much better afterward. 
It's like a high. You feel like almost high. Well, so it. much of our lives too are like we have to repress those things oh to get through life. Constantly, constantly. So then you're all crying the time. about your dog, obviously. But you're like, crying about everything. But it's everything you've ever yeah. needed to cry about. Yeah, it's crazy. And then you get through it. That's what they're like. There's like the what's the quote where it's like, you like to get through fear. You have like the only way to get over fear is to get through it or right. whatever or sadness. Like you have to go through yeah. everything. You have to experience it. Yeah. You have to experience it. It's, that's why I was thinking that I was able to deal with it. I think pretty well because I've done so many psychedelics mm -hmm. and I've had instances where I've over, not overdosed, but taken significantly where more than like, I thought I was going to take. Yeah. And all you can do is just fucking you hold get on. Through it, yeah. You just wait. It sucks, but you know, it's going to end. Yeah. I feel like that's what it is. It's just, I know. And then you, but you want to like, like, not fucking, like hate it. It's like, so when you're like, Oh God, I'm starting to hate it now. I'm like hating, so upset. Hating the grief. When you're in like, but what, um, no, I mean with psychedelics. So what, oh. what psychedelics have you done? I mean, I've done, well, there's not that many of them, really. You know, I think I've done all of them. Yeah. But I've, you do ayahuasca? Um, no, I haven't done ayahuasca. I guess I haven't. So I'm scared of that. DMT? Just have, but yeah. I think the most I've done is LSD. I've done like, I did a yeah. accidentally dose. I think I took like four or five hits by accident <sighs> one day by myself at around 11 a.m. <laughs> uh, I thought I was microdosing, but I actually You was, put a whole dropper in. Oh. Was it a dropper? This is a long story. Because the droppers are, <laughs> all of your stories are long. Well, it is. This is a very long it's a story. Podcast. Like I've, I've done a whole two hour podcast of this story. This yeah. is about, I don't know, five, six, oh God, I, don't, I don't know. It was a while ago. But I had You're some. You're mad at me because you don't remember <laughs> the. No, I'm getting mad at myself because like, oh, I. Don't I'm not mad at you. <laughs> I'm mad at the time. I'm mad at time. <laughs> Fucking this. <laughs> yeah. We do need to move this. Why is this like. Yeah. Why is like, it like tickling our guests? Every time my guest like, is saying something, they're uh, like. <laughs> so I took too much acid, right? <laughs> and I had a, I had a, uh, I had a pipette. But I thought I had liquid acid I got from somebody. But please, stop it. I don't know you. Then I took you. <laughs> I guess I'm stuck here. <laughs> this bit's gonna have to go for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> I took too much acid, Andy. Oh, it's such a nightmare. Yeah. Taking, there's also a middle ground that's the worst too. What do you mean? Where you take just an uncomfortable amount, where you're like, you oh, mean where I'm you're just uncomfortable. Like, oh. Yeah, we're like, <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna learn anything from this, but also this is just gonna maybe gonna suck for a while. Yeah, where the whole trip is like a coming up. Like yeah, the coming like, up feeling is like the yeah, whole like, trip. Okay, I'm sweating. My palms are sweating. I have to take oh, a shit. Uh, you mean bad acid? <laughs> I mean, I think that's what that is actually. Because I got some acid from somebody once that was the best acid ever. I saved it and I tried some other acid once, and it was like, oh, this is not yeah. the same. This is very different experience. That's the problem with acid. You can't. I can't take it anymore because I don't have time to find out if this is good. Oh. How about I took Molly once that was, I don't know what it was, was not Molly. I yeah. was in pain and couldn't move. My whole body was yep. aching and I couldn't do anything to relieve it for like six hours. That's the problem. It's like you get older and you would pay a lot of money <laughs> to have, to know this is the good yeah. version of what you want to get. Why don't we just make the drug dealers do it first? Because it's so fucking hard to make some of those drugs, especially yeah. LSD. That shit is so complicated. We had the, and the best. people who do make it. There's like two guys. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they're so old. We're trying to pump they're them back old. to life, and they're like, "Ugh, it's we crazy. Um, is crazy." We did acid at Skankfest, and that was so fun. Have you done Skankfest? I haven't. You'd no. be. I'd like to do that. King of Skankfest. Why? You would be so fun there. Oh, okay. You're like such a fun hang. It's like it's such a fun hang. Yeah, I'm, I like. I've known a bunch of those guys for a long time. I like them all. And stuff, yeah, but I you'd just be great ever, there. I feel like. I kind of ride, not in between. I don't know, because I'm not like in that world per se. But I'm but also you fit not, in. Yeah, but I'm there, also yeah. like not in the the opposite. The people who hate them, I'm not in. I know those people. Right. I'm friends with them, and I kind of fit, fit in there. You I know, feel like I we even like need a, to stop with the hating. It's like let's uh, all just I think be friends. Definitely, need it's to like stop we with all. That. It's like funny how we're all different, and it's great. Totally, I always think that's the case all the time. Because I always felt like I kind of straddled both sides too. Yeah, and yeah. it's a thing where. The fact that there's any kind of division at all is insane, but also these are these are people who do comedy and they are all, everyone who does comedy is a fucking case. They're all cases. Everyone is. I'm not. Okay. Yeah. You know, you're just the. <laughs> I'm doing great. <laughs> you probably uh, probably of all the people are the person who addresses it the most. There's so many people who act yeah. like they're. I'm just normal. It's like you do comedy. Yeah, it's you not do the normal. most unnatural thing that's ever existed. My mom wanted to write a book about raising a like how great she did raising a 
female comedian. Yeah. I'm like, mom, it, you did the worst job. Like, you for me to become like successful at this, yeah. like this isn't like a hobby I'm doing on like Thursday nights after work. Like, this is my full. Like, I dedicate my full life to doing this. Like, you failed. Mm -hmm. You failed. Yeah, every comedian is basically just an example of how their parents failed. Yes, and and what ways they failed. Or it's also just, hey, I didn't become a murderer. Isn't that yeah, cool? Yeah, is that cool that I'm I didn't murdering. do anything bad? Were you, did you get like arrested in high school? Were you like that no, kind of kid? No, I wasn't bad at all. You're a good kid. I mean, even if I did, I think I would probably get out of it. Yeah. Like I was not, um, I would do, do like nothing really bad, but I think I would like do like, you know, lightweight vandalism and stuff. But Cool. Yeah. But like out was, there? No, we would do stuff like get a um, hundred pounds of dog food and put it in someone's mailbox. Oh, or that's would, um, fun. Take like someone take a shit and we'd write stuff on someone's door with, with, a, shit? with a shit. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> we would also, that's, you, you're kind of like Tom Greenish. Did you watch the Tom Green show? Oh, are you kidding me? It was so good. What is yeah. it? Wasn't he such an inspiration? He like, was, the, he was, it was just when he would pay oh my pennies, God. when he would pour the pennies out and stuff. Everything oh, he my did God. was just so annoying. He was so annoying. That's I just wanted to be Tom Green. Yeah. It's so bad. He was the best. The I feel like his parents did good, though. His parents made him, like, encourage him to be annoying. Right. He had those parents where they just, he loves to annoy his parents. Right. And he, when the dad gets annoyed, it just makes Tom want to do more. Yes. It's the same sort of like the Bam Margera thing, I The guess. funniest, but it didn't work out. Bam's fucked up. Yeah. But Bam had a, well, I don't he's know. He's like in the hospital and stuff. He's like not doing good. Yeah. He's, well, he's, a, he's, he's an, an addict. addict. He's yeah. an addict. And but I think, yeah, your parents can be too loose or whatever. Yeah. But- but we we became friends with um, Ed Bassmaster. Oh my God, the greatest! We love him so much, and he, he was on the podcast, and he you was talking. I saw him about, there. I was like, Oh my God! Oh my oh, God! Were you there the other day when he was yes. at the? Yes, I saw him on the street when I was yes. coming in. I was like, Oh my God! I was just so <laughs> yeah, fucking blown he's the away. Best. That he's guy is so shit. good. But he was so he was one of those guys that he's like, I just loved making my parents laugh. He's like, really? my whole life was just like. He's from Philly, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he's got like kind of cool working class parents, maybe. Yes. And then his, did you see his son was there? No. His son is like grown really? now. He's like 20. Oh my That's God. That's funny. He couldn't, they wouldn't let him in. He had to stand outside. Damn. <laughs> he's like smoking weed Wait, outside. So, he's like breaking another law. Outside. So he's like a wholesome guy. He's the best. Yes. But in Married life, kids, great guy. But yeah. I mean, he's like, he had good parents. I think so. I think that's what it seems so maybe, to I don't me. think all comedians. But I think there's parents. like, but if you think about like, he really brings joy. Like, so I think the fucked yeah, up parents people, yeah. it's like, we're like, we toe the line between like, are we taking from the audience or giving to them? Do I need your reaction or am I giving you this? Which okay. I think I've worked on and I think I am giving now. I think in the beginning. You want to like, be giving. I, I think I, like, if I have a bad set, it's because I am like trying to get, I'm like, I need you but to laugh you don't at think this. it's for you though? You know, of course. I mean, you do it a for A little you. bit. Yeah, but. Right. But I, mean, but I if, want to show off. Like, I want to like show my jokes. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to show you guys my jokes. That's how I okay. feel. It's like, I want to show my, and like, if there's like comics there that I, I'm like, oh, I want to show you my dick. I want to like fucking. You want to show them what you got. Yeah. Yeah. I like guess when I, I first started way. working with Stanhope, I was like, that wasn't good yet. You want them to like you. I want them to see that you're at your well, best. Well, I want that. I want to show them everything I've got. Like I'm opening right. for a burr next week and I'm like, ooh, I'm going to blow your mind, dude. Yeah. I want to get up for you, burr. Every time he sees me, he doesn't recognize me. As the one time I met him. One of the first times I met him was doing the comedy store and whoever brought me up, this idiot was like, it's his first time doing comedy. <laughs> That's such a nice thing to do because then you can crush. He just didn't know me because he thought I was like a kid, you know, yeah. this was about, I don't know, maybe a while ago. And I f***ing crushed so hard. Yeah. Like I because crushed, they also were like, this is incredible. This is the first time. Well, no, it's because I had a great set. <laughs> and no, no, no. It's not because of that at all. <laughs> But the, I think it's a combination of it, right? The combination of that, combination of them thinking it's my first time and also right. having this really good set at the time. Yeah. And then Bill complimented me afterwards, like, oh my God, that was so fuck, that was so fucking good. And I'm like, oh, thank you. But I'm thinking, oh, he just thinks I say that because he thinks it's my first time doing There's comedy. There's no way. There's no way. <laughs> yeah, I think so. You think so? You think he thought that? Yeah, because he saw the set and he said it was funny, but he also heard what the host said. I don't think he knew who I was at that point in time. Yeah. And he, and he still, still doesn't, doesn't know. Who I am. <laughs> I've met him like 10 times. Honestly, I've met him like 10 or 15 times. Yeah. I think I've met Marin about 15 times. I'm still meeting Marin. <laughs> Marin and Burr were, were standing in what the. What is that? Why? What? Marin? Why am I still meeting both of those men? The only people I'm they're just still meeting. They're, they're threatened by you. Is that it? Yeah. You might be it. They were talking on the stairs, at, like in front of the OR. Yeah. 
And I went, I went, oh my God, are you guys? And it's like 10. They're both like tense talkers, they you are know? so weird when people say OR, because I always think it's an operating room. Yeah. But it's like the, <laughs> the original they? room. The original O-R, room. OR, okay. is it? Yeah. They're talking. Sorry. They're talking. They're so talking. they're talking. And I go up and I go, oh, wait, were you guys friends in Boston? They're like, sort of. I go, were you guys friends in LA? That was good. They're like, no, not fucking. They're like, we hate each other. What no. do you think? No. We're at an hour. But yeah, but both of them, I think, are, well, both of them are warm in t- at times, but I think they deal with anger. So, oh, you maybe think that's there? <laughs> I don't know. I said something about like, "You're right," because I'm not angry. I go, "Okay, yeah, sure." He's not angry at all. Me neither. I'm not angry. No, he's definitely. He's definitely. It's not the. It's not the I'm foundation not of his comedy at all. <laughs> it's not sort of like the the church on which the rock on which he's built his church. <laughs> the church on which he's built his rock. The church on which he's built his rock. Boom! Don't you wish you could slap a Bible like that? You can. I know. I want to start being that comedian. You could. You, you think do Steve look Harvey's like... funny? I think he's so fucking funny. Steve man. Harvey yeah. is a king. He's Steve so Harvey's funny. like a god to me. He, no, no, no. I feel exactly the same <laughs> yeah. way. And if there's any allegations that come out about, I don't oh, believe. I said them. the same thing. I said the same thing. <laughs> if I Steve Harvey them. ever gets canceled, I'm just I'm gonna do something. I'm going to Mongolia. I worked with him, and he liked me. I oh, did a thing on his god. show. He, he just have the this Steve Harvey show. I was losing my mind because. Family Feud. He is good because he does this. What he does, at the end, he, he does shames stuff and he them. Goes like he, someone says something, he goes. <laughs> <laughs> she just said he does like the slowest <laughs> burn, and it just fucking crushes. <laughs> so People will say something, and he'll go. He'll go. There is no way that's something like when he tells them. Yeah. Todd does like it has been doing a Steve Harvey Fuck. impression in our house for yeah, literally yeah. forty eight hours straight. It has not stopped. I just go, yo, man, this is what you got to do, yo, man. When God comes to you, you got to, you got to leap, man. That's what I'm saying, you yo, man. Leap. That's good. That's good. Son. But it's so good. And it's like, and Steve Harvey gives these like inspirational talks I afterwards. Oh, he's them. amazing. Well, okay. So when I was doing the show, so you did the Steve Harvey show and I was doing, we should find a clip of it and then we can put it in the, in the podcast. I'll see if I can find it. Yeah. But it was, I was doing Man on the Street and I was like so nervous because it's like, you know, networks, I can't yeah. like be dirty or anything. So I'm like. Like I'm riffing on live TV. Like this right. is like not for me. I don't know how I got this job, but I said, made some joke about some guy was like, um, said his name was Caleb. I was like, oh, cool name. Terrible vegetable. And Steve Harvey thought it was the funniest thing he'd ever heard. <laughs> Disgusting vegetable. He's like, oh my God, she's great. And I was like, oh my God. And he even oh kind of sized God. me up and I was like, you can size me up. Like I literally was like, okay, <laughs> like God, Steve, what do you want? Stevie? Like, I love him. He's so I love funny. Steve, man. So, um, so I did this man on the street and they were driving me. It was an, at universal. And this kid was driving me in a golf cart up to the, to the set or to the like Harry Potter, wherever we were. And he, um, I asked him, I was like, oh, how'd you get this job? He goes, oh, he's my uncle. I'm like, really? What's the best advice he's ever given you? And he said, it matters who your friends are, like who you hang out with. Yeah. And I remember being like, oh, I don't like that. And as I get, oh, it's super as important. I get uh, more into this and more successful, I'm like, oh my God, I completely understand what they're saying. Because you don't have time to fuck with negative energy. You don't have time Neg- to fuck with Energy someone. people that are feel entitled. You just don't have feel, time yep. for it. You just don't have time because it's like, well, you know, I, I, yeah. I realize now how fast things move and you can't go down a path that's going to lead you. Yeah, I can't, you can't be, waste time. You can't yeah, waste you can't time. waste time. You can't. And there's so many people that will take that time from you. Especially in this town. <laughs> yes. In Annie, this fucking town. Do a do your impression of Steve Harvey saying that to his nephew. Listen, little man. <laughs> Am I going to get Aquafina? <laughs> young man. Listen, young man. <laughs> I know your father. He's my brother. <laughs> this is good. You need to look up to God and say. Ooh, I think that was a little bit too much. I don't think he says God. Like you just God. You kind of went. Uh, God. You need to look to God. Oh, yeah, there you go, God. Yeah. And say, who are my friends? Because Jesus did not pick good friends. Uh-huh. And look at what happened to him. He had a lot of good friends. Just one of them was bad. <laughs> one bad friend will will put you on a cross. But wasn't that fated to happen? And it worked out for him. Yeah, and he, he ended up being the guy and he died for the, our sins. The guy. He chose Judas because he knew he was going to betray him, right? He needed to have that, yeah. We okay. should do a Bible podcast. <laughs> That's actually so funny. You never know, never read the Bible. You haven't? I know nothing of it. You have no religious I background? No, I was brought up Quaker. Very chill religion. But that's 
It's not based in Christianity. They did yeah. not make me do a thing. We sat in silence. We stood up if we want, felt like we wanted to speak, which you know I stood up every Sunday. <laughs> yes. You, I know. you, you told me about this. You told me about this. So you, you don't know anything about scripture at all? Nothing. Nothing. We could do that podcast where you Weird. teach it to me. I don't know. I know just a tiny, tiny bit just from school. Todd tiny, comes in burning tiny the Bible. Bit. Do, do a, uh, a, a breakdown synopsis of what you think the Bible is about. As Steve Harvey? As your own self. <laughs> okay, the Bible is a book of stories. Mm -hmm. Is there a whale? Is that Moby Dick? <laughs> is that Moby Dick? You got the New Testament and the Old Testament. Oh, I don't know about the news and the Old Testament. How do you not know that? <laughs> You know, there's a New Testament. There's letters Old of Testament? John, letters from John, letters from Paul. I took a class gospel? called Letters from <laughs> Paul. <laughs> letters from John. Brother like Brian, Brother Mouton. Brother. <laughs> with a goodbye note letter. Dear John. Dear John. <laughs> Dear John. I don't think I saw that. No, letters from Paul or something. Letter from Letters from Paul to the Ephesians. I read, I had a, a I took a class called Letters to Paul in college. Oh. I don't um, remember any of it. I don't know. I don't know. I'd I really don't know anything. My, I'd befriended my college professors and they like passed me as like a friend in class. That's a good, that's a good technique. Just my dad taught me that, but you know what it, it taught? It, I realized like I have a deep seated, like negative um, belief about myself that I learned from my dad that we have to be charming to belong somewhere that we can't just be there. Ooh, there's this great song. Ah, what's, what's it called? Um, the Earth Cannot Hold Me by Kathy Heidman. One of the lyrics is, Blah 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 blah. There is no place I don't belong. I always think about that. That's such a good lyric, you know. Like, there's no place. You mm -hmm. don't, you don't, of course, you don't like have everywhere. to do something to be some to belong right. somewhere. But I will say, my charm has gotten me into things for my sure. Whole life. And my dad's like that too. But I could just be there anyway. Yeah, but so is like charming stuff. I mean, I'm the same way, right? But so did like Kevin Spacey, you know, like ooh. That's all that stuff is all Kevin safe spacey. It's no all one's like ever called touching him that. the darkness, right? He would have loved to diddle you. Well, he Oh my god, Kevin Spacey would just rub you up. <laughs> You'd have to try. If I was Kevin Spacey, I would rub god. on you. I would have my scarf. He came to the comedy store once. Really? All scarfed up. It was after it got canceled. Ooh, scarfed wow. up. What do you mean he scarfed watched, up? He was wearing like he was wearing like scarves to hide himself, but he like drew so much attention to him. Wow. And he was sitting in the back watching Theo Von set. <laughs> I um, I like this. I like the set you did. It's good. Do you remember that crazy video he put out after he got oh, yeah. canceled? Oh, it yeah, was, I, was I, I enjoyed the swing. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, into that stuff when he was talking about. Like, I had loved the, that. He had the uh, the apron on. He's still talking like there's things that happen in life, and he's you slicing. can be a person and not understand that I will go back to the honesty thought. Like what the. F it yeah. was great. He is one of those guys who doesn't have a personality. I think he lost himself in Frank Underwood for real. I really think he did. No, to do that in the character was wild. Well, but I don't think he, it's like he doesn't have a personal, he's used to impersonate Johnny Carson's son on the reg to get into places for free. That's he's what he's so do? At, yeah, for real. He's so good at impersonations because he doesn't have, a lot of these really good actors do not have um, a personality. I'm not, I'm not saying that right. Their, their base personality, who they are, absorbs everyone else. It's just very blank, very boring. Think about Robert Pattinson. Like, have you ever seen him in an interview? He's just real, like, real vanilla, real flat. He's a friend of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I love Robert Pattinson. This is, I'm not kidding. I, I'm literally saying How this. How you backpedal? This is so funny. That's not a backpedal. He's a dear friend. He's watching, but that's okay. No, it's not, it's not a backpedal at all. I think that he would acknowledge that himself, that he has a very flat, normal personality. And that's why he's able to, <laughs> he to have a flat, normal He doesn't seem, he's not super expressive. I don't or know. Wild I don't know. Very like, there. in an interview, he's very um, soft spoken, mm -hmm. like very level. Yeah. There's not a lot of stuff going on, yeah. but the characters he plays are crazy and they're right. amazing. I think it's because he can access them because. You don't think he like chokes women in bed really hard? <laughs> I don't think so. I think he's probably like a gentleman for real. Yeah. I think he He came to the comedy store and he was yeah, very nice. He, he has to be. Him, but I think Spacey's the same way. But when he started doing Frank Underwood, he found the closest person. It happened to Johnny Depp. Like Johnny Depp started to become. Oh, my God, you're so funny. You're right. It's true. These guys, they find you're the right. character. That's why it's been so weird. You're like, you're not being a. What because you are. he doesn't know how to be himself anymore because he has absorbed Captain Jack right. Sparrow as his own personality. It's so funny to absorb that character. <laughs> but it, it, feels, it feels so good. To play as someone who's played yes. many characters, 
the character I play, anytime I play a character, I like it so much more than being myself. Like wow. I love it a thousand times more than being myself that if I could live in that, I would definitely choose to live in that. And if you were really wealthy, there's no one telling you like, Hey man, you're kind of acting like Jack Sparrow right now. Yeah, it's He's really like, we're directly what do you mean? I'm just of the Caribbean. I don't know. You know? <laughs> it's just who he is now. Because it, it feels so fucking good to be Jack Sparrow. Why would you be this guy who's like kind of like, who is he? He's just a cool guy. That's why Jim Carrey went crazy. He was like being the mask. He's like, somebody stop yeah. me. You're like, oh my God. You're and like you, in the bank. No one would stop him. Yeah, and no one is so like, good I'm not being yet. stopped. <laughs> I mean, it is so crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder how it feels too. If like, if Johnny Depp wrapped himself in the Jack Sparrow, what if like so he gets recast? Mm -hmm. Like Jack Sparrow gets recast. I wonder what that feels like too. Yeah, to just be like, oh, someone else is mean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no one will ever be that character again, though. It's always gonna be him. Have you been to Hollywood Boulevard? <laughs> Pretty close. That guy's very close. Yeah. <laughs> really, but if good. you get really close, it started to be like he's a little chubby. <laughs> Well, Spoon's been out here for a while. <laughs> I know he does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I look at you're worried about him getting offended, but not Robert Pattinson. Um, because Robert Pattinson's smart enough to not get offended. But this guy could get you anytime. Who? The sparrow. The spare sparrow. You mean Johnny? The fake Johnny. Oh, the fake sparrow. Yeah, those guys actually are kind of scary. he's I'm not saying anything I about him. Yeah. Have you hung out with um, Johnny Depp ever? Johnny Depp? Yeah. If I hung out with Johnny Depp ever. Well, the dog stand ups runs with him. I mean, is he? Is he? Yeah. Are they friends? Yes. Are they like? Uh, no, they're like friends. Yeah, no. They're no. like friends. I one time I cornered Santa Bob. I was like, "Give me Johnny Depp." He was like, "Okay," but nothing's happened. Oh, well, I don't know. No, I have not. Hung I was out like, with "Give JD. him to me," especially during the the trial. I'm like, "Come on, he's now he's discount." Yeah, he's been through a trial. Right. I watched his daughter get eaten out by the weekend last night. <laughs> oh, that's his daughter, right? How weird is that? It's full oh my sex scenes. She's so Talking cute though. Man. She's a lesbian. Fun, fun, fun. Mm, me too. You could be. Mm -hmm. Play a teen lesbian. I'd be a good lesbian. <laughs> I like lesbians. Todd does too. Todd loves lesbians. I like when lesbians are like, I'll take care of this for you. <laughs> I mean, you get to be a break. Take yeah, a break. When they're like, you know, step in and take care, do the thing that's difficult or when like uh you see like a lesbian get offended and just and down dress somebody i love that shit no i haven't seen that oh my god i love that shit. i had two lesbian teachers in elementary school that were dating each other really and they would get in fight like huge crazy oh, I bet those are very some crazy good fights. fights it was good it was fun it was very dramatic i got a lesbian i think i had a lesbian nun probably oh I'm probably not sure. quite a few honestly yeah i mean i have no idea if i knew to know or not but i think I don't know. It feels like I'm thinking about it now. It seems like she might have been. She was cool. She was tough. Very funny. She was mean. Sounds like a lesbian to me. Yeah, tough, tough funny, very funny, mean, mean but also gotcha. very cool. Yeah. Yep. Well, <laughs> I'm not now. This cool. was an huh? absolute delight. Thanks for coming. It's great being here. You're the best. You're so funny. Is this how you're really gonna end it? Do you want to sew it up some way? You want to tell like a crazy story? Sure. I don't know. I'm just asking. Oh, God, yes, you're your one man show. I mean, but when's this coming out? Next Two weeks? Well, next Thursday. Oh, I'm doing it on Friday. I'm doing it tomorrow. Oh, great. I'm doing it tomorrow. Perfect. Then I'm not doing it. I'm not scheduled to do it until who knows? Probably do it in New York or something like Where that. Where are you doing it? Where? Where? Oh, I'm doing it at the Broadwater Theater. Where's that? It's on uh, Santa Monica. <coughs> it's a part of the theater complex, Theater Row. Yeah. Oh, I like that Theater Row. It's a good theater. It's a very nice theater. Perfect size. I don't know what else to promote. I don't know. You'll see. Just kind of go to just Google me. Google him. Go He's got me. a lot of movies. Go to you my watch Twenty Two Jump Street. That came out recently. Yeah, it did. Right Ant Man. Recently. I do like when I'm in a movie and I don't know you're in it, and then you're in it. It's so exciting. Yeah, that's kind of fun. I guess that's kind of cool. Fallout's gonna be awesome. I Fall am a be, huge Fallout fan. So yeah, Fallout's gonna be uh, very interesting to see that. It's I'm excited. Cool. You know what's gonna fall out? My boobs, because I'm gonna flash the screen. <laughs> Can't wait. And that's how we wrap it up. Johnny Pemberton, Great to be the here. man. Follow him on Instagram. And what do you like the most? Uh, probably Instagram, Instagram and TikTok. And TikTok. TikTok's more fun. I'm not even on TikTok really. Get on there. You'll love it. It seems like too daunting. Um, it's just too much fun. Really? Okay. Yeah. I'll do it. It's where it's at. See you guys on TikTok. We really do. We love each other. It's the meat and potatoes. 
welcome to any wood. This is the land of the stannies, annies, and fannies, and all of the secret nannies. Yeah, welcome to any wood. This is the land of the stannies, annies, and fannies, and all of the secret nannies. I'm gonna fire Oscar, I'm about to prosper. Blingy on my drinky, and Randy is living proper. Protector of the sick, she'd never let her fishes die. Never known to tell a lie, she even fixed Todd's eyes. Shout out to the slugs, shout out Woody's too. Shout out SD and Kalila and the Annie Wood crew. Cause this is Annie Wood, you know that this is how I'm living. Real and never pretending shit, you know that this is a gift. Welcome to Annie Wood. This is the land of the Stannies, Annies, and Fannies, and all of the Seepa Nannies.